Good afternoon, everyone. It's two o'clock. I'm here in council chambers and members of council and staff are uh, variously working from home or some are in their offices here in the municipal center. Um, so I will call this meeting to order. And I would like to begin everyone with a, a, just a moment of silence in to honor the victims of what happened in Nova Scotia yesterday. So if, if you don't mind, uh, we'll take a moment of silence before we get rolling. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and just so everybody knows, uh, staff have lowered the flags at uh, various er areas in the municipality to have staff uh, for that same purpose as well today. So I'll need a motion. Uh, the first is the approval of the agenda that council approved the April 20th, 2020 special council meeting agenda as presented. Is that your hand up in the air, Councillor Tadman? Yes, it is. Do you like it? I fine by me. <laughs> is there a seconder? I'll second that. Uh, Councillor Bateman had his hand up, so I'm taking Councillor Bateman as the seconder. Is there any discussion? All, all those in favor? Yes. Oh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, under the procedural bylaw, because of these electronic meetings, all of our motions uh, have to be discerned by recorded vote. So I will turn the floor over to the clerk who will call the recorded vote by uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, Madam Clerk. Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Raleigh. Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman. Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. And Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, everyone. I'll ask if there are any declarations of pecuniary interest, and if so, please state the general nature thereof. There are none noted. So we'll move straight into motions, and our first is with regard to meeting schedules and the procedural bylaw, and it's moved by Mayor Ostrander seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink, that Council suspend the rules of procedure of the procedural bylaw 126-2018 subsection 4.2 regular meeting schedule of Council and 4.3 Council planning meetings to alter the order of business for the month of May to allow combined meetings for May 4th and May 19th and to cancel meetings scheduled for May 11th and further that the rules of procedural of procedure bylaw 126 2018 subject subsection 12.1 council agenda order of the day be suspended to alter the order of business during the COVID-19 pandemic to the following call of order approval of agenda disclosure of pecuniary interest staff reports roundtable discussions confirmation bylaw and adjournment is there any discussion don't see any so madam clerk i'll ask you to call the vote by alphabetical order councillor ron anderson yes councillor mark bateman yes councillor doug leblanc yes councillor emily rally yes councillor mary tadman yes deputy mayor laura vink Oh, and Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. Uh, thank you again. So our second motion is with regard to events in the community. And uh, it's also moved by myself, Mayor Brian Ostrander, second by Deputy Mayor Vink, 
province has extended all emergency orders under section 7.0.2 of the Emergency Management Civil Protection Act until May 12, 2020, including the closure of outdoor amenities in parks and recreational areas, non-essential workplaces, public places and bars and restaurants, along with restrictions on social gatherings. This extension is to help stop the spread of COVID-19 and to protect the health and safety of Ontarians. That as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 issue and the Government of Ontario extending all emergency orders, Council feels it prudent to cancel all community events until the end of August 2020. So I'll open the floor for discussion. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, I second in this motion. Obviously, uh, we certainly have to do something. Um, uh, I, I hate how the end of August 2020 sounds. Sounds uh, like we're going to miss the whole season. Uh, but I do understand that we have um, we have to pre-book a lot of these events, and that's the reason for it. Um, once things do open up a little bit, if, if it's possible for us to have some of these events, the, um, the concerts in the park or any sort of event, uh, um, it'd be great for us to be able to do those things still. So although I will vote in favor of this, I'm, I'm hoping that at one point, maybe we can do something a little bit different and maybe, you know, in the month of August, we will be able to do a few things for September. So anyway, just, just my thoughts on this. Thank you. Councillor Bateman. I know it's uh, state community events. Does this have any applicable impact to, say, Brighton baseball, Brighton soccer, and so forth? Um, this would not be applicable to those, but what would apply to those would be the closure of all the sports fields under provincial yeah. order. Okay. Anyone else? Councillor LeBlanc? Through you, uh, Your Honor. Uh, so if it's due to till May 12th, so the sports fields would be closed till May 12th. The same as that um, the fishing docks, like I live with my wife, we're always in contact. And why couldn't we go fishing in the boat if nobody else joins the boat to go fishing to uh, get rid of all the events? And like our parks are closed, people need to get out because of this, uh, what do they call it? Uh, cabin fever, I think, is going to become to be diagnosed very shortly as a disease. If this goes much longer, people can't go out and walk or get to somewhere where they can do something. And I kind of agree, August is a long time, but we have to start educating ourselves on social distancing, washing. So are we going to wait till after August that we get ourselves all together and, and learn this? Because this virus is here for a while. It's not going to go away overnight. Just my point, I will vote with this to go to August, but it's just, I wanted to put my viewpoints on there also. Uh, thank you, Councillor LeBlanc. And, and to your point, uh, people may go out in their boats if they can access uh, lakes and rivers through private uh, launches. It's the public boat launches that have been closed because they're considered recreational facilities and we've closed them um, under provincial order. Our parks are still open, but the facilities in the parks are closed. So King Edward Park has been, been closed because it's entirely sports facilities or playgrounds but memorial park is still open and our other parks are still open conservation authorities are still open and walking trails remain open um, unless people have difficulty with the physical distancing nature of some of the trails i think that will will remain at least that's my understanding from the um, information i've seen so um, i agree with you some people do need to get out and about and uh, um, there are opportunities for that as long as the physical distancing protocols are maintained. So thank you for your comments, Councillor Lovelock. Councillor Tadman. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I will support this motion, but I certainly think that maybe we might be able to amend it for some, some of the events. And so that will be a possibility, is that correct? Sh should the the pandemic be deemed over or should a vaccine uh, be found uh, in, in the short term, we can certainly rescind this motion at any time. Right. And uh, I just, uh, uh, I don't know where it came from, but uh, I understand that the people in the Ottawa Valley, probably the East Coast, cabin feverish, um, driving people shack wacky. And um, I just want to let you know that I'm doing very well here in God's country. 
and uh, Councillor LeBlanc, you can launch your boat from my place. <laughs> there you go. Problem solved. You said I have a crowd. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. I don't know if uh, uh, people are asking about Apple Fest as well. I don't know if we want to throw Apple Fest into this. I don't know if we even want to have that conversation. I don't know if we want to save it for another meeting. Um, I certainly don't want to see us canceling something like Apple Fest right away, but uh, I know how much um, preparation goes into it. And uh, I'm not sure if uh, a gathering of 10,000 will be allowable in September or not. Um, but uh, um, I'm just throwing it out there. Does anyone want to have that conversation yet? Do we want to leave it for our next meeting? It's certainly something we need to discuss. I don't want to be hasty about it either, but uh, uh, there's a, a committee that's rare in the go, but uh, everyone's afraid to do anything because we can't start hosting anything. May I say something here? Of course. Um, um, Laura, I believe that uh, you might have a, you haven't started uh, taking any bookings yet, uh, I understand, as far as uh, vendors go. So it could be a real challenge if it's delayed for another month or so before you actually jump in and start that process. Uh, it might be a, a weak turnout just from uh, the vendors not knowing what to do, or they may be having a challenging year themselves where if they're traveling here to come to, to be a vendor here or our local businesses uh, will have a lot, a lot on their plate when they get back streaming in in their business too so it might be welcome to them but it might be a challenge for everybody so it might be a consideration that that might be a consideration to make a decision now perhaps councillor bateman uh uh two things just uh what the deputy mayor spoke about apple fest i'm in agreement i'd rather see the apple fest committee i don't know if they're meeting virtually maybe they can have a virtual meeting and then come back with what they feel they can or cannot do and then as the deputy mayor indicated maybe talk about this at the next meeting after we hear from the actual committee so just just to speak to that quickly councillor bateman we um we suspended all committee meetings uh through april and we'll be talking about how to whether or not to allow uh, committee meetings to move forward in in yeah. this uh, agenda here so i suspect apple fest has not formally met although probably people have been talking uh, about how to move forward when that time comes and that's probably where the deputy mayor's comments are are coming from right. councillor tadman i think in all practicality uh, with the the separation for two people just uh, imagine ten thousand people and trying to set separate them that far we'd use up the whole area of the municipality i think in practical terms we can't do alpha fest councillor rowley thank you mayor um i would i would agree with laura i i'm not so sure that we should maybe have that discussion today i would certainly uh like to see where we go in the agenda with what uh, advisory committees can do and that maybe um our committee could have a look at that and maybe come up with some uh maybe a small function maybe uh i do agree ten thousand people in brighton in september is probably not going to uh be good or work but i think there might be some options that maybe uh, as a committee we could uh could look at so i would be in favor of um, waiting until such time that council permits committees to meet hopefully that would be soon and uh, that we could have a, a meeting with our committee and see if there are um, suggestions out there. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. I actually, I, I think that's a good idea. Um, but I think then later on in the agenda, we have to allow Apple Fest to have a virtual meeting so we can talk about a few things and then, then we can come back and with report to, to, to council and a decision can be made if that's a possibility later on. We, we can. We don't need to add it to this discussion right now or this um, this motion. One, uh, Councillor Bateman. One last one. Yeah, if we go back to the the community concert events, the fastest approaching event coming up would be the walleye tournament, and I know that primarily out of Quinney West, but we've had way stations, I believe, in the past down in Gosport. If our boat docks closed, are we going to have a way station down there? Or is that going to be encompassed under this? I don't believe Quinney West has canceled that yet. In fact, my understanding is the Kiwanis are prepared to move forward with the walleye tournament. So, um, 
uh, uh, Mr. Miller, have we been contacted from the by the Kiwanis? No, we have not. Uh, haven't received any word from anybody regarding uh, the new date. Uh, I'm aware of it, but nobody's uh, talked to me about it. Um, regarding the uh, community center, does this fall under that as well? The, the rentals <laughs> for that till the end of August, or is it the provincial? What, what we're doing in this is uh, canceling all community events till the end of August. So I guess we we, brought, we should probably d define community events yeah. a little better under this motion uh, because Mr. Miller brings up a valid point. Are we going to start writing uh, deposit checks back to um, folks who have uh, deposits down on the community center through uh, until the end of August? So before sure. I open the floor for that, uh, sort of side discussion. Councillor Anderson, you were looking to say say something on the last bit. Well, making these <coughs> for, you know, again, Apple Fest, uh, I agree that the committee should have some input into this, but uh, before we make a final decision, but decision. But I think the province is the one that's going to come down and tell us when we can do these, uh, open the floor for these things. And I think end of August is just a, a guideline uh, because we don't know and uh, we don't know what they're going to say and it doesn't sound like it's but things may open up and I don't think to the magnitude of having public events more than 50 or whatever whatever their threshold will be they might be small weddings allowed there might be but you know 5,000 10,000 even a smaller version of the Apple Fest maybe but I think we won't know until it's almost too late to make a uh, to you know to organize something efficiently good, good and valid point uh, councillor bateman i was just going to say i agree with that but there's a side part that i would say that we'd have to look at as well because we can't always rely on the province but the province has said she will go ahead so now that means we would have to make that decision to rely on the province that's that's correct and uh oh, councillor leblanc yes i would agree with the, the statements the rumor, the thing that I heard on the walleye tournament that it was uh, put off to the May 2-4 weekend, I, that, that's what the fishermen are telling me and when I bought my my my, uh, my ticket. The other one is too, if this coronavirus is still going, uh, Brighton doesn't have any cases. Do you want to bring cases into Brighton with too many people? But you also got to look at Canada Day. We might have a smaller event, maybe just the citizens and the vendors from Brighton because it is a an event that has gone on for a lot of years. We don't have the, the virus here in, in Brighton yet that I've heard of. So we got to look at it all and also the town, the, the province is saying till May 12th. So we're having council meetings after May 12th and maybe if the uh, Apple Fest committee or Canada Day committee can get together, we can find out more information by then. Uh, your chair, thank you. Welcome. It's my understanding that the province can only extend this uh, emergency by 28 days at a time through the legislation. So that's that's why we're seeing these these leapfrogs. Um, but we're able to. Uh, I mean, we can't crystal ball this. No one knows when this is going to end or how this is going to end or what tomorrow is going to look like. But uh, we do know that we have a committee that, uh, in terms of our community events committee, that needs to be writing deposit checks and and getting things in order for. Uh, music in the park or movies in the park or Canada Day and so that's why uh, we're being asked to consider these closures now because otherwise they'd need to start writing um, and, and signing people up for these events like Canada Day and so on now in my discussions with the chair of the community events committee he's supportive of whatever uh, council wants to do in terms of closures and and um, when I told him that this was going to be on the agenda and um, closing things down until the end of August, he, he was supportive of that because he knows the kind of work that goes into preparing for these events. And of course, if if we can rescind it and bring it back a bit, he's happy to uh, to work really hard and, and get some uh, concerts in the park going for the end of the summer season if, if they can do that. But um, he's also pleased that we're looking um, as far out as we can in this. Deputy Mayor. Um, yes, I guess uh, when I read this motion, I'm thinking when I read community events, I'm thinking all the events planned by the community events committee. That's that's my understanding. But if there's a broader term here, I guess I think we do need to define what we are talking about here when we're canceling to the end of uh, August. 
maybe we need to also uh, be like the province and maybe not 28 days, but why don't we cancel to the end of July? You know what I mean? Like just maybe not so long and then we can discuss it again later on. Uh, you know, the world has changed a lot in a few months. It may change again in a few months. We don't know that. Um, but yes, Canada Day, I can't, it's not necessarily about what we're going to be able to do on that day. It's about planning ahead for those those events. It takes uh, months of planning in order for things to happen. So I, I don't think we're going to be able to have a Canada Day. And, uh, um, you know, unless we want to have a gathering of five people. Um, so um, at this point, um, I'm not Couple. sure that, uh, I guess, I think, I think that I need this defined a little bit more. What is it that we're canceling? Uh, I saw someone else's hand. Was it Councillor Rowley? Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just want to go back to the community events committee. I've also been uh, in touch with, with the chair and I know speaking with some of the um, community members as well, uh, as, you, as with most committees, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the members are seniors they're very concerned as well as to what their role could be um, in these kind of big crowds. And um, some of them will be fairly reluctant, I believe, to uh, participate if there's a lot of, with, with a lot of folks, uh, you know, gathering in one, in one small space. I, I agree with, with uh, the deputy mayor. Maybe we should go month to month. Maybe we cancel everything until uh, the end of July, which would include Canada Day and half of the concerts. Uh, for sure. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I know before this started, we, we have um, a lot of uh, musicians, a lot of groups ready to go, more or less. But, uh, you know, that I, I think there's been less correspondence as well. As of course, those folks don't know if they want to come to Brighton either with what's going on. So, uh, yeah, I would agree. Maybe we wait. Maybe we cancel till the end of August or till the end of July and see what maybe August brings. Councilor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the more I think about all of this, for one thing, I don't think you can cancel Canada Day. It is. Uh, and so um, I know that, uh, that the federal government has already announced that they're going to do a Canada Day virtually. So there'll be something online for people. And I think we've got a lot of creative people in Brighton. I'm not one of them. I have no I have no IT experience and I don't have a lot of desire to learn more, but I know there's a lot of people out there and I think we could do something quite nice here in Brighton, the same as some of the other events. So I don't know, uh, I'm more with what, uh, uh, one second, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't think we cancel till the end of August, the more I think about it, I think, um, at least to the end of July, but I wouldn't put out there that we're canceling Canada Day. I think that sounds pretty sad. Uh, and, and we haven't specifically said Canada Day in this. We're just canceling events through to, and we'll pick a day. But Canada Day is an event. It would be one of the events that we would be not, not holding this year because of this motion, yes. <clears throat> um, may I say something? Go ahead. When it comes to the recreation uh, and and then the, the hall with the weddings and that. I do believe that you need to give them a little bit more. By saying July, I sort of say, say August is okay. Um, I, I think you need to stretch it a little more on some of those things. And then also in the summer sports, as in, uh, I think Councillor Bateman mentioned, or someone mentioned uh, soccer and baseball. Uh, those are things uh, they might get, people may get a little charged up thinking that we're, you know, we're going on the field on in August and, and to let them down and sort and shorter notice, uh, it might be, and not, we have enough things to deal with. And, and I think the community needs to still be thinking of this situation uh, as we have been and, and not get too relaxed on this. So um, I'm still believing in end of August. I'm concerned about Apple Fest, but that I think the committee that needs to make that just fine. So that's, I think we should stay till the end of August, and that, and I, I'd like to hear from uh, Jim on his opinion of that. My main thing was about the uh, the King Edward Park being a concern. So, can I ask Jim uh, if you want to weigh in on that, Mr. Miller? Do you have anything to Jim say on that? <laughs> All three 
Mayor Ostrander. Yeah, that's a concern of mine is the, like, especially the hall because there's a lot of, uh, you know, yearly events that take place in the summer by some of the groups that I do have four weddings booked and uh, they've deposit, they paid their deposit. And I'm sure they're really antsy to find out whether, you know, all their planning is gonna come to fruition or not. Um, and uh, the fields, I mean, we're working, uh, gonna be working hard to keep everything maintained uh, just in case, you know, we are able to, to get on the fields and play. I know minor ball, um, you know, they're all different associations too, right? The Ontario uh, Baseball Association is is their uh, main, uh, you know, contact and, and they kind of state wh whenever, uh, when they can play. Uh, I guess it's just like the OMHA with hockey. Whatever they decide is what the, as a parent, what will be what, uh, you know, the, the local associations will follow. So. So can I, have you, um, back to you, have you uh, heard from any of those outside or larger organizations that will, you know, they come from other communities to play here within that league or whatever? Um, have you heard from them on what they're planning on doing? Or they wait, wait and see like us? Well, I, I talked to Minor Ball last week, that their president, and he hasn't heard a thing. They haven't had even had registration yet. He doesn't think they're going to be playing this year. Uh, from what he hears from the Ontario uh, Baseball Minor Baseball Association, um, I know soccer had registration because they usually do the registrations in February. But again, um, you know, I haven't heard anything. Uh, any of the groups trying to uh, do anything this summer. Councillor Bateman. I was just uh, two points on the outdoor recreation for soccer, whether it be baseball or not, that really falls under the provincial or those parks are closed until such time the premier says that they can open up. And then after that, that's when those associations, their governing bodies would weigh in with a decision. So until the premier opens parks, we don't even have to worry about that discussion. And on the walleye tournament, I just wanted to confirm that count for uh, LeBlanc is correct. The tournament has been pushed back to the 23rd and 24th week after a long weekend so with uh with council's with council's permission and the deputy mayor as the seconder uh, i would amend the motion at the moment anyway to read um where it says feels it is prudent to cancel all community events i would add as hosted and coordinated by the community events and civic awards committee just to define what we're talking about in terms of a community event um, so that would not include things like minor ball, minor sports, if those open up. Uh, it also wouldn't include private or non-municipal events like like the walleye tournament. Um, that would be determined by how we would be able to accommodate them or not. It, and and we would leave that up to, uh, up to our, our staff to determine operationally if that could go forward in Brighton. Councillor Bateman? I was going to say that would include the yard on Main that has been, I think that's scheduled first week in July. So they'd have to be notified because the parks aren't open. That's a private event, but it, that is a private event. But and and the park is open. That one is yes. Yeah. yeah. So that would not include them because they're not a municipal event. So they would have to determine how best to move forward unless we wanted to include them or that particular event in this or any other particular event in this motion. Deputy Mayor. Uh, I think though, uh, the, the, the whole uh, point of this is that uh, um, by provincial order, you know, you can't have these, these large gatherings. Unless those things change, none of these events are allowed to happen. But that's not our decision to make. Um, whether someone has a wedding uh, reception, that's not our decision to make. That is a, uh, decision that is going to be uh, determined by when that order is lifted, right? Um, so um, at this point, I think we're really just talking about community events. Um, I, I, yeah, Art on Main is a little bit of a gray area, it, but still it's a private event and still there isn't allowed a gathering of that, that, and there's no businesses downtown that are open or very few that are open, like the doors open sort of thing, right? Uh, so. Um, I think we need to stick to community events. Right. Uh, from from a municipal perspective, I think you're right. Um, 
and I would I would concur with the sentiment that art, art on main probably shouldn't move forward uh, just based on the gathering requirements. More, more than five people certainly in vendors alone show up for that. So, um, you know, we would we would leave that up to the art on main group to to determine how best to move forward. But um, I would hope that they would um, see that they could somebody could get charged if if they coordinated an event where more than five people showed up. So. Uh, and they could get charged by a municipal bylaw officer. So they need to be aware of, of what's happening there in, in the world. And um, certainly those of us who know th those coordinators should probably be in touch with them and um, maybe persuade them in the right, what I'll refer, loosely refer to as the right direction. I don't know what, what's best for them um, in terms of their, their coordination and when they should look to be canceling. Um, but I would leave that up to them to decide. Anyone else on this one? Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, there again, Art on Main, are there any implications to the municipality if they were to say close uh, Veterans Way Street, which I believe in the past they have done, or um, I know it's uh, Memorial Park is not a municipal park. However, it is, uh, it is a municipal it's park. <laughs> so they're, you know, playing on our, in our playground more or less, would there be any implications to the municipality then for allowing such an event to happen good point fair question mr castleman would you like to chime in here i don't know the answer to that i'm not, I'm not sure if i know the answer uh, also obviously we have some emergency orders that we have to abide by so if the province or the feds are saying thou shalt do this or thou shalt not do this we have to strictly abide by those orders and each and every day we're trying to interpret what those orders mean and how it impacts the municipality. So we would do the same thing. Uh, right now, the uh, parks and the playground uh, amenities are closed to the public with the exception of a walk through along our trails or our parks. But beyond that, people are not allowed in. Thank you. Um, someone else, oh, Councilor LeBlanc. Your microphone, Doug. Sorry, I, I muted. Uh, for a gathering of five people or more, they have to be within the, the six foot radius. If you're looking at the Prince Edward Park or the park, you're looking at almost an acre and a half. You can more than accommodate five people in there. And we have to educate ourselves if this virus is gonna stay around on how we can have these type of meetings with our distancing and how we're gonna put our boots to do it because until we get a vaccine or we gotta to get to some type of, of, of life. But it's five five people within that six foot radius. Yeah. Thank you. Um, could, could we ask staff to bring forward a report um, with regard to other things like uh, our responsibility for things like, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not pointing them out, but groups like the Art on Main group that would rent our facilities and and sort of a, a best guess in, in what we can do to offer advice to those groups or, or provide cancellations for them in a timely manner if we feel that that's necessary. Council, are you okay with that? If, if we get uh, Parks and Rec and, and administrative staff to offer that advice to us? I don't need a motion, just a bob of heads would be fine or Thank you. Okay. So right now the motion uh, is to cancel all community events and that's specific to municipal community events hosted by the um, Community Events Civic Awards Committee. And it still reads until the end of August, 2020. Is that what we want? I think so. No, not me. No. So what do we want? End of July? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. end of july yes yes we can always revisit this in may or and or june to push it back so yeah. there's lots um, there's lots of time okay so deputy mayor as the mover and seconder we're okay with end of july for now okay does that work yeah okay yes so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna reread the whole motion but the last paragraph in the motion reads that as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 issue and the government of Ontario extending all emergency orders, council feels it's prudent to cancel all community events 
as hosted and coordinated by the Civic Awards, pardon me, by the Community Events and Civic Awards Committee until the end of July 2020. And Madam Clerk, I have this in writing, so you can come collect this from me. Um, if there's no further discussion, I will ask for the recorded vote starting with, uh, under the procedural bylaw, starting with the councillor um, in alphabetical so order. So there is one question. Oh, go ahead, councillor Anderson. Go uh, ahead. So at any time we can push this another month, like just right. like. That's right. We, we can. All right at our next meeting. And that's really why we should have sort of an ongoing report about this, Mr. Castleman, just to keep it on the table in case we need to push it or rescind it at any time. Yeah, hopefully we, we can rescind it. <laughs> well, that would be nice, but I'm not, uh, I'm not anticipating okay. that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> Councilor LeBlanc. That's all to you, your mayor. That's the same that uh, uh, Councilor uh, Ron Anderson said. Okay. As long as it's visited again, like we could visit it every meeting. And yeah. if we have to extend it or shorten it, we can do it. That's all I want to put into motion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Clerk, go ahead and call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councilor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councilor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councilor Emily Rowley. Yes. Councilor Mary Tadman. Yes, and I got candy here. Would you like one? <laughs> Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Uh, yes to the motion and yes to Councilor Tadman. <laughs> I'll have one for you. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. It's carried. All right. Thank you, everyone. We move into staff reports. Our first report is from the CAO, and I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Mr. Castleman, so you can go through your report. And specifically, as I mentioned before the meeting, I think what council really wants to know are those uh, those items that are in absolute jeopardy or that you think are, are done for, for this year. Sure. Thanks. Thanks very much. Um, the purpose of the report uh, is to give council an update with respect to the 2020 capital projects, along with the uh, three or four major operational initiatives that we approved during the 2020 budget. And I wanted to give you uh, that update in the context of the pandemic and what implications that might have on our ability to get some or all of the projects completed as we had envisioned. So what I've done is I've provided you with a, um, uh, some of the legislation that we've been dealing with on an ongoing basis in order to assist uh, staff and trying to understanding understand what the implications might be and i've also given you a comprehensive list of each and every capital project that we had envisioned for 2020 and i've indicated what the project is the status of the project what the budget is and in staff's views um, if projects are in jeopardy we've indicated those that either are deemed to be non-critical projects and not allowed to be completed and or uh, projects that staff have deemed to be of lower priority and given the staff resources that we have based upon business continuity uh, initiatives that we just won't be able to get to. So uh, firstly, I wanted to uh, go to the list and I wanted to give you uh, a little bit of an update with respect to what has occurred um, since the report went out. So there's a couple of updates that I wanted to bring to your attention. So I'm, I'm referring specifically to the detailed list of the 2020 capital project updates. And it's uh, uh, all of the various projects that have been uh, initiated for um, uh, the 2020 capital year. So wanted to give you an update, uh, certainly on in, in the fire department. One of the updates that I wanted to provide to you is with respect to the um, uh, SCBA compressors. Uh, and I wanted to indicate to you that um, while the tenders were under review last week, the tenders have been looked at in detail and the award of the tenders 
uh, has occurred, I think, as of last Thursday or Friday. And uh, uh, I awarded the contract. It came in under budget. And uh, that's a little bit of an update for you. Second update is with respect to 170 Main Street. And uh, we have a project that has been lingering since 2019. And that's an update to the, uh, the washrooms and the, to the total of about $70,000 or so. We had awarded the contract, we're ready to go. And then we had further provisions that do not allow us to continue on with that project. Very unfortunate because it would be an ideal time to complete the project given that the YMCA has been closed. So uh, that's an update for you. The uh, third update is uh, uh, in relation to our industrial park. And uh, for those who have toured through the industrial park over the course of the last couple of weeks, you will have noticed that uh, we are we have some hydro poles up and we were uh, in the midst of uh, getting ready to string the lines and to energize the park. Uh, in anticipation of selling some more lots and uh, getting on with the development within our industrial park. So we've been working uh, closely with Hydro One who have uh, recently advised us that they're moving away from the project because of the provincial uh, emergency orders that in their view have deemed this project not to be of, of uh, criticality in nature. Uh, so they moved away and are focusing their attention on critical projects pursuant to the emergency orders that have come down from the province. So I thought it was important to give you an update with respect to uh, not only you an update, council an update, but also the community an update with respect to um, all of the 2020 capital projects and those that are going to be in jeopardy. So I'm going to just take a minute and talk to you about those that I think are uh, of low priority and or going to be in jeopardy as a result of the uh, pandemic. So just bear with me. So um, I'm just go going to uh, run through the projects that have been, have been deemed to be of low priority. I'm gonna start out in the general government area we had uh, um, proposed to complete an IT master plan and proposed to uh, purchase a number of different computers to help out with the operation. Uh, we had also proposed to uh, turn our mind to repairing the bricks on the back end of uh, our uh, 35 Alice Street property. As you know, the, the bricks are flaking and that's been an ongoing problem for a couple of years. Uh, we've also looked at uh, um, um, the Alice Street generator and doing a redesign on that to try and understand what the load is going to be. Those are four projects that we've deemed to be of lower priority. If we have time and resources to get at them, we will. Having said that, they've been put aside in order to allow the remaining staff to focus on the, uh, uh, the more, the higher priority projects. So the next, uh, the next item that uh, I've already talked about is the uh, washroom project at the YMCA. That's certainly a project that is going to be put off because of the pandemic uh, in particular. When we're going to be, get it, get, be able to get at that project, uh, I don't know. As soon as uh, um, YMCA is deemed as a, an essential business, we'll get back at it, but uh, get uh, Notice from the province uh, that project will be put on hold. We have a couple projects out of the uh, uh, Public Works building uh, down on Sharp Road. Uh, in particular, we have uh, uh, some various uh, uh, AC uh, garage door work that we wanted to get completed to the tune of about $65,000. That's going to be put on hold. We had an HVAC system up on the, in the chat and garage. That's going to be put on hold, deemed to be lower priority in nature. Uh, we had uh, anticipated doing some guard wear, guard rail work. Uh, that's deemed to be a lower priority at this point in time. We'll get to it uh, as as we can. Um, 
I'm going to move over to the parks area and talk to you about a few projects there. Uh, we have an exciting project that we received a significant grant for, and that's our skateboard facility. Having said that, that project has not been deemed to be a critical project uh, by the province. So uh, while we have the funding and are ready to go, uh, that will be put on hold. Uh, we'll try and lift that as quickly as we can, but uh, for now that, uh, that project certainly is in jeopardy as a result, a direct result of the pandemic. We've got some tree replacement uh, that's just been deemed as a lower priority. And uh, we're looking at the dog park. We're trying to move forward with the uh, establishment of dog park uh, as quickly as we can. Having said that in the big picture, uh, that's not uh, high on the priority list. We're gonna try and get to it as quickly as we can because of uh, uh, obvious reasons. It's, it's a great amenity for the community. And if we can get it done, great. Uh, having said that, it's not been deemed as a uh, top prayer. Uh, we've talked a little bit about our industrial park and unfortunately that's a direct uh, um, result of the pandemic. We're not gonna be able to get it serviced uh, by Hydro One until such time that uh, um, industrial parks have been deemed to be an essential business. Um, in the wastewater area, we have uh, two or three projects that uh, we're going to put on hold as a result of uh, um, other priorities. We have uh, the uh, pumping station design that was uh, to be completed. We have uh, some work on the garage um, that we're going to put off to the tune of $60,000. We have a, a, a bypass chamber. Uh, and valve work that is going to be put off. I think as we get going uh, in the uh, wastewater area uh, uh, for 2020, our focus is going to be squarely on getting the MBBR project done. And that's going to be priority number one in our wastewater area. And uh, priority two and three will be um, the main pumping station and um, and the force main project. But uh, our view is uh, the 2020 priority is the MBBR project, the pumping station and the force main, if it goes ahead, will be a 2021 project at best. Uh, a couple other items in the water distribution area. Uh, two projects that have deemed to be not high in the priority list are uh, the water modeling to the tune of $75,000 and also the booster station study uh, to the tune of about $10,000. Again, if we get to it, great, uh, but it's not been deemed to be a priority project. Um, some of the main projects that we have in mind, we've done some pre-engineering, as you know, and we allocated about $528,000 to pre-engineering to try and get um, shovel-ready projects in the queue so that if we had necessary funding, we could go ahead. And certainly our main project for 2020 is Sanford Street. And uh, we've had a public information session uh, back in March. And you can see that we have about 90% of the design completed. We've outlined for you when we're planning on going to tender, when we're and uh, approximately when construction is gonna be completed. So we've done the same thing for the Sharp Road project. Uh, we've identified uh, when we plan to go to tender, um, when we plan to get on with the project, and when we plan to complete the project. The, the third item uh, is with respect to Telephone Road. And uh, as you will recall, we had um, originally thought that uh, so I'm going to take a step back. We had, we've had we been having quite a discussion with respect to Telephone Road and uh, ultimately need to decide what level of service or what level of road or standard of road that we're going to provide. Um, we have budgeted almost a million dollars for that project. Uh, with that million dollars, we'd anticipated getting on with uh, what I'll call the hard topping of, uh, of the whole road from 26 to 30. There's been some discussion, certainly, of cost sharing with the county, and we need to do a little bit more homework in that regard. 
Uh, one of the thoughts that we had as a cost saving measure was to um, give consideration to only hard topping a portion of uh, that section of, uh, of roadway and also perhaps going to double surface treatment for the remain for the remainder that would provide a significant cost savings to the municipality uh, we're not there yet we're still trying to do a little bit of homework with respect to uh, uh, has there been a previous agreement with the county yes or no our findings thus far have said no there has not been but uh, uh, there's some additional files that we need to review and determine um, is there a cost sharing or is there not and uh, if there is that will assist us in um, getting on with hard topping of the project and with the cost sharing with the county otherwise we may turn our mind to uh, simply going to double service treatment and uh, doing the best job we can at significantly lower cost so um, I want to move on from uh, capital projects and talk to you a little bit about uh, some major operational projects that we had in mind as you recall we have some um, sidewalk work that we wanted to get caught up on uh, from years gone by we have uh, significant dollars that have been allocated about two hundred eighty thousand dollars or so our intention is to continue on with that process and try and get the sidewalks done in 2020. we also had identified one of our major initiatives in um, 2020 was dealing with uh, tree removal uh, with uh, diseased trees or trees that are falling down or dangerous trees and uh, we've allocated about two hundred forty five thousand dollars or so again our intention is uh, to get on with that project because of uh, uh, how critical it is from our perspective from a safety safety concern um, so we're, we're, our intention is to get on with that project and get it completed in 2020. we have our ongoing ditching program that we're going to continue on with and we have um, ongoing brushing program that we're going to continue on with. We're going to do it in-house this year because of the uh, purchase of a rubber tire loader, a rubber tire excavator, sorry. And uh, one of the other projects, and uh, maybe Linda can jump in here, is with respect to uh, business uh, or building continuity uh, for working through with uh, Kojiko there seems to be some issue with respect to funding uh, from Kojiko and as a result of that that project has been put on hold for now but I'll I'll turn that over to Linda you can jump in here so Kojiko had proposed um, being able to um, connect our rural buildings as well as all of our urban buildings the urban buildings can be connected now to fiber, um, but the rural buildings, um, meaning the North Fire Hall and the North Shop, um, cannot be connected at this time. Um, there's been a change in some of their funding levels, and so they've applied to the province and the feds for more money. And we, we have to wait and see how that um, turns out for them. Um, we cannot afford to it would be very expensive for us to be able to run fiber all the way out there. It would have to be uh, a partnership with Kojiko. Right. Thanks, Linda. So that gives you a bit of an update with respect to uh, where we are on the 2020 capital program and what projects, quite frankly, have been deemed to be a lower priority and or uh, are just not possible as a result of uh, the pandemic and the emergency orders that have been uh, <coughs> declared by the province. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Castleman. So we'll get a motion on the floor and then I'll open the floor for questions. <coughs> the motion will read that council received the 2020 capital project update report for information purposes. And I'll ask for a mover. Councillor Anderson, seconded by Councillor Bateman. Questions from members of council? Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the whole uh, pumping station design, I think we can't leave it to our reports that we got in the past and it's been going on for several years is that pumping station certainly needs a lot of work and I don't think we should put it off. The same with the, the bypass chamber. 
and I know it's important and I want to see the MBBR, but I do not want to poke the bear. We have had a lot of fines and I think that we were told to get this fixed and I think we need to get that pumping station. If that doesn't work, you know where a lot of us will be in really bad situations. So I, I don't know. I, I don't understand why that's not a, a priority. Do you want to speak to that, Mr. Castleman? Sure, either myself and or Preston. It's, uh, <clears throat> I, I think one of the concerns is, is, is our finances. And our council has indicated that our number one priority is the MBBR project, full stop. We've got um, $8.8 million that, have, that has been allocated towards that project. Very significant money um, for a community of this size. Um, realistically um we're not going to get any other project beyond the mbbr project completed this year and uh, from a financial perspective our recommendation would be complete the design for the pumping station this year as best we can or as soon as we can get it to be shovel ready and in our view that would be our staff's view that would be a, a 2021 project so MBBR number one, you know, we're going to get the design done on the pumping station as soon as we can, get it shovel ready for 2000. Can I ask? Uh, Hang on, I'm, I'm going to go to Councillor Bateman and then I'll come back to you, Councillor Anderson. Thanks. Thanks, Mary. My, uh, the question I have, my first question, then I'll wait my turn. On the MBBR, I know we applied for funding. Is there any update on the green stream funding for the MBBR? And I know we were originally supposed to apply for funding back over a year ago and then the election fell in there. So what's the update on the funding? Well, certainly we've applied for funding, met the guidelines, and uh, there's been no notice at all from either the province or the federal level of government with respect to that green fund. Obviously the province and uh, and the feds uh, are right up to their eyeballs with respect to COVID. Uh, when that's gonna happen, we have received no notice. Councillor Anderson? No, I don't accept that. <clears throat> I don't accept that. I think uh, you applied a long time ago. Uh, we talked to our MPPs. Uh, we were pretty excited that we had the application on time. Uh, I've seen money being handed out all around us. Um, I, I won't. I don't want to mention any communities because that's not fair to them. They're having great success, real new, close to us. Five million dollars was handed out this past week to one of the communities for uh, uh, a project uh, or it's capital items. Um, it seems to be everything's going around us and not landing in Brighton. Um, uh, I, uh, I I don't think it's acceptable to be saying they're not talking to us and, they're, and we're not hearing back in it. It's a, it's a large project, it's needed, it's something that would highly qualify for funding. And that's how we understood it. And that's why the application went in. It went in uh, as, as guided. So I think we need to get on the phone with somebody and find out what's going on as far as these funding. And there's, and there's other projects, there's other things here that are dependent on funding grant pending, grant pending, uh, chiller, dehumidifier. You know, what's all happening with all the pending? So, I don't know. Uh, we need to get our, our, we need to be on the map. And uh, how do we do it? Bob? Sir Tadman. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, once again, I say this is as urgent as anything. There's no point in even having the MBBR put in it if my toilet and every other resident in the urban areas toilets start to come up in front of us and we cannot use them so i still think because i know from the the, the whole studies on that pumping station it's a mess and it needs to be fixed so on on both of those uh issues i'll come i'll come back to you doug i see your hand um I have been in, I have been in touch with both the MP and the MPP with regard to the grants, and uh, I have been informed that we are uh, top priority 
but we haven't seen any movement from the, uh, the organization that releases the grant money uh, from the federal level. So that's where things are being held up at the moment, uh, Councillor Anderson. And uh, the, the intent is uh, to, to push a little harder for that green fund money so that we can get moving on the, uh, on the MBBR. And uh, Councillor Tadman, I think we heard that the design for the force main and the pumping station does remain a priority and, and it, the project won't go ahead until 2021, but the design will. Um, and I think it's important that we have these designs in place because my suspicion is coming out of this pandemic, we're gonna, get, we're gonna see some pretty significant infrastructure money uh, to help boost the economy because I think we're going to be into a pretty serious recession for quite a while. And so it will be uh, it will be good for us to be able to take advantage of those uh, infrastructure monies. Um, but uh, Councillor Dabman, I'm not I'm not pushing aside your your comments. I think those projects are absolutely should be absolute top priorities once the design is done as well. <coughs> I hope they're not. May I speak? Um, I hope they're not holding back on 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 this like it was a year ago that we applied for this and if they're holding back to wait for a, a great opportunity to, to come along and say we're going to give a boost to the economy uh, our economy is dependent on it right now yeah it was it was september uh councillor anderson that we applied for this money or september or october uh -oh. when that fund was opened up uh, we've been talking about it forever because we knew it was coming but we didn't we couldn't apply until that fund opened up and correct could you um remind me mr Cusman, when was that was that september no, it's in January. We we made application. I think my recollection is the uh, the deadline was uh, January 20th or January 22nd uh, or late late January of uh, 2020. So that was just five months ago, four months ago. Yeah. So and we continue to wait. I I don't know when the the anticipated announcement would be, but um, we're not even in May yet. So it's not unusual for these things to take. Uh, this long. We would like to hear because we'd like to be able to tender that project and get moving on it. Uh, we know we can't do any construction um, without those, without knowing whether we're going to get that grant or not, because we can't have a shovel in the ground or we won't be, we won't be applied for the grant money. So we, we know that's important too. Councillor LeBlanc. Yes, Mayor, I got my phone on. Uh, in the, what I, when we, what's, first started the council in January of 2019, three projects came up that were key. Building the doctor's facility by the Y. The washrooms at the Y were emergency because people could walk and cut their feet. And the other one was the lift station because two thirds of the, of the wastewater flows through that to go to the wastewater treatment plant. We awarded money for it. We also awarded money for a design. It went out to tender. And we approved the contractor way back in February, in April or March of 2019. And after I met with the winning contractor about, uh, I'd say about a month ago, I asked him where he was on the design because I wanted to know. He still hadn't received the PO over a year. So it's, it's a priority that we've set and was set by previous council and by us. But the thing is, the last, us, this council last year we said and we voted on to approve the contractor to get that bid in April. Why wasn't that, that PO sent to that contractor to finish the design on the lift station? We did the doctors. I understand why the washrooms were delayed. I understand that, I agree with that, why it went to go. But the lift station is mandatory to go. They're also with the wastewater treatment plant, it's a tertiary treatment and we gotta wait for the funding to do that. But the operators of the wastewater treatment plant, if you look at the, the uh, report they supplied, they did extremely well. And they had a below average for 365 days of 11 for ammonia, with the regulation being at 14, 15. So they were well below, and they only had two exceedances. But what they did, what did they do different last year than they did in years before to get it to keep it at those levels? So we gotta get some of the projects. The other one also is the brushing. If we're canceling other other things, we have drainage problems, culvert problems, and brushing we can do, and the and the sidewalks. To me, with all the people that are walking, and for accessibility, when uh, Preston said 
in one of the meetings that we have to do three years of 320000 a year before we meet the minimal standard for accessibility on our sidewalks, well, this is time we can do it. And I agree with the CAO, we need funding. And I agree with you, Mayor, after my conversation I had today with some of the MPs and the stuff, and, and the stuff I was on the conference call, funding is going to open a, after this virus. And people that have shovel-ready projects, they're going to need a lot of stimulus to start this economy going again. Okay? So I'd like to have the answer, why didn't that purchase, why wasn't the contract for design for the lift station awarded the contract to design last year when the council voted to give it to the, to the company in April? Mr. Thank Councilman, you. are you able to answer that question? If not, I'm fine with that. That's not a not really what we're here. We're not here to grill staff. So, I'll you, find you out. Pardon me. I'll find out. Thank you. So, uh, staff will find out about the uh, the process generated for design of the pumping station, um, the lift station, as you call it, and uh, we'll go from there. Just a reminder that we're uh, we're not in a council session to. Uh, to grill staff or play gotcha games. Um, if you have a question like that for staff, don't hesitate to send an email. Uh, they are still working. Even if they're working from home, I'm sure they could get you those those answers. Um, but council, or pardon me, CAO will, will try to uh, get those answers for us. Uh, Councillor Anderson, you had a question. Uh, a different a different item. Uh, I just think uh, I'll bring it up. It's, a, it's regarding the uh, telephone road. Uh, the last council meeting or one of our uh, one of the last two meetings we had we had asked for a report back uh, we were talking about rerouting the truck route uh, for that portion of the road so the road wouldn't have to be addressed if the county wasn't going to be part I'm of gonna, it or, I'm going to cut you off there Councillor Anderson about. I'm going to cut you off Councillor Anderson because that would be a question for our solicitor and my understanding is that Public Works uh, director was going to, through the, the CAO's office, was going to get some um, advice from the solicitor for us. So I suspect that at some point we will uh, hear that advice in a closed session. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Deputy Mayor? Thank you. Um, I know it's hard to hear some of these projects that are on hold, and I do trust that staff are going to uh, prioritize and do what needs to be done. Um, and as soon as we're able to uh, have a green light, we can get going on these things again. Um, uh, so obviously I'm going to be uh, in favor of, uh, of approving this. Thank you. Councillor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. I yeah I'm not wanting to grill staff but i'd like to go back to the uh, pumping station as well i know a month or six weeks ago we had a bit of an emergency down at the uh, harbor street pumping station um, and when i see bypass chamber and valve replacement i'm wondering um if we had that done would would that alleviate concerns that we would have down there or, or has the um has the issue been uh, corrected enough that we can get till to next year to 2021 as far as uh, the equipment goes Mr. Castleman or Mr. Parkinson, are you able to answer that? Perhaps Preston. Through a year, you were uh, The project for the bypass valve chamber is um, over on the Lagoon property. And it's just a, a valve chamber that will bypass the flow of sewage straight into the lagoon uh, from and divert it from the aeration pond. So it, uh, it, it's just some gates that are seized in order to do those changes back and forth. So the failure that we had were some bolts that rusted off in the meter chamber at the side of the pumping station. Uh, that's what caused that failure uh, that we had a few weeks ago. And that's all been remedied and we put some procedures in place where we can inspect that on a more frequent basis, you know, a basis so that it doesn't happen again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, it, to, to speak to the deputy mayor's point, it is difficult to hear uh, when we're pushing projects back. Um, I know this council, all of us, have prided ourselves on the work that we've planned for and the stuff we're getting done. So it's it's tough to hear when, uh, because of the issues that we're undergoing at the moment, that we've got to push stuff back. Uh, I have no doubt that we'd be getting a lot more done if it hadn't been for uh, for uh, an unplanned pandemic. No one, no one ever. Uh, 
plans for these things uh, thankfully um, just to clarify though roads sidewalks brushing and brushing, <laughs> they're still on the t table and we're still moving forward with all of those planned projects is that correct that's correct thank you so we will continue to get that work done and of course other design work as well because um, we we know it's important to have those things shovel ready so uh, not just the uh, pumping station of course main but also other plan uh, we're working on other plans too so that we have um, shovel ready projects in our queue is that true that's true okay, well okay anyone else before i call the vote council leblanc yes your honor that was not a guy i got you moment i have sent emails and i have not got replied so i figured this was my opportunity to ask that question if i offended anybody i'm sorry okay thank you sir councillor bateman uh, just more of a clarification question i fully understand why the why washrooms aren't being done but i thought we originally tendered that quite some time ago i think we only received one tender and i think there was more to it than that they thought has it been retendered or is it going to be retendered if and when uh, when COVID-19 allows. So I, I, I'm going to get uh, is Scott with us. It looks like he is. Mr. Poole, are you there? If you don't have a rain right front, it's OK. I just want to update my notes from the original meeting. Dude, if it's OK, I can speak Preston? to it. Sorry, you go. Uh, yeah, so we did some more uh, inspections and some more uh, remediation work and uh, redeveloped the scope of work to be a little more defined. And then we retendered it, and uh, the CAO just signed off on that uh, a couple of weeks ago now to have that project done. And then the new restrictions came into effect, which put up a roadblock for us. Councilor Tadman? Uh, did you think I wanted to talk to you, Mir? <laughs> I thought I thought you had something to say, Councillor Tadman. I saw I your hand some, I always have magically going in front of the screen like this. So. Well, let me say that I'm very disappointed that nothing's going to be done on the municipal building, but I'll still keep her. I was surprised you hadn't mentioned that sooner, actually, Councillor Tadman. Well, I'm trying to be nice, but it's hard. There you go. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion to receive this report for information. It's moved by Councillor Anderson, it's seconded by Councillor Bateman. If there's no further discussion, Councillor LeBlanc. One question, Your Honor, and it's probably for Preston. Uh, when they're gonna do the tree cutting, is are they gonna be putting the logs? Because a lot of our citizens have chainsaws. They could use some of these trees for firewood. Is, are you, is it gonna go to a landfill or a place that somebody could use them so they could be of some use in recycling for our citizens? Parkinson? through you your worship uh yes so in the tender we'll specify a certain diameter that they have to chip and remove the rest of the wood to be left onto the side of the road and then the residents can go clean it up at their at their leisure and then you generally the larger stumps don't get touched so we'll have to go around with our loader or the uh, new rubber tire excavator pick those up and remove them at that time thank you thank you anything else madam clerk will you please call the vote Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? It's really hard to say, but I will say yes. I'm still disappointed. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. And it's carried. So item six has been added to our agenda. It's a round table discussion. And as part of that round table discussion, our first item is to discuss advisory committees to meet virtually. So this was mentioned Mayor, by a couple- Mayor, you skipped one of the staff reports. Sorry. I apologize. Oh, well, Madam Clerk, this is your report, so I'll allow you to speak to it. <laughs> oh, 
I don't really have anything else to add. It's just that um, we've been told that we can use other members of staff um, for enforcement, for law enforcement. So we are um, wanting to put a, that in a bylaw and it's just temporary. And what the bylaw states is that we are going to try to, or that we would like to appoint um, Rick Caddick, Fire Chief, and Jeff Ogden, Deputy Fire Chief for law enforcement. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So I will need a motion, but the motion will read that council received staff report regarding appointment of temporary municipal bylaw enforcement officers during COVID-19 pandemic and further that council approved the execution of a bylaw to appoint temporary municipal law enforcement officers during the COVID-19 pandemic. I have a mover, please. Councilor Rowley. I have it moved by Councillor Tadman and seconded by Councillor Rowley. And I'll open the floor for discussion or questions. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Um, so just uh, so we can get a little bit of clarity, the whole idea behind this is that uh, so that our chief and deputy chief can also enforce some of the uh, regulations um, during the pandemic. But I think also it's just so that uh, they're able to, I and mean, we don't really want to, um, I don't want a strong arm of enforcement going around. I would rather people just be educated as to what they're doing and shouldn't be doing. Um, so just some clarity on those two things, uh, whether that's really what our intention is or not, uh, would be great. Sure, I'll, 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 I'll jump in here. Uh, uh, compliance is uh, absolutely what we're aiming for. Uh, we are working with and have discussions with uh, the OPP on a weekly basis with respect to um, how the pandemic is uh, unfolding and uh, how enforcement is going or not going, what assistance and or what partnerships that we can have with the OPP as it relates to enforcement of uh, the emergency orders. Uh, obviously we have our bylaw enforcement officer that has been uh, participating and active with the OPP and on the enforcement side, uh, designating a couple more uh, individuals uh, allows us an opportunity, should it uh, should it surface, uh, that will allow us to provide some additional assistance. Thus far, enforcement, quite frankly, has been good within the community. Uh, we hope that it remains so, that people pay attention with respect to social distancing and uh, heeding the warnings from the Ministry of Health and uh, and the province. Um, as, as I mentioned at the start, we're not here to have a heavy hand. We're here to educate and we're here to protect our citizens on an ongoing basis. That's our intention. Uh, it's not to have a heavy hand and or issue 150 fines. That's not our intention very clearly. Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is sort of related, and I think it would help if um, Ben could put this out. I've um, heard from several people that, especially in the two grocery stores, that uh, not many, but a few people have been very rude in it and have upset some of the cashiers. I think it's a good thing to remind everyone that they're they're doing a service for us and they should not be treated rudely and yelled at and so if we could get that out on the website it i think would be very good and i know that it doesn't necessarily pertain to what we're doing here i think this is a good idea just in case we need more enforcement otherwise uh, at, at now uh, both our chief and deputy chief are staying at home is that correct so will they now be going out and about? I think, I sorry, for you, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I think our intention is that um, um, they'll be used as, as backup. Our primary uh, enforcement group is through the OPP. Secondary yes. is through our bylaw enforcement officer. Right. And uh, um, uh, tertiary uh, um, services, if required, would be through um, the chief and deputy chief. At this point in time, 
it is not required in my view and in the view of the OPP, but maybe in the future, where, as I said, enforcement has been good within the community and we hope that continues on such that we quite frankly don't need their services. But uh, in the event that we do, we'll have them in place. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, and uh, it's good to hear that. Um, I think uh, there's there's a lot of stuff going around on social media and people talking, and uh, there's a lot of things uh, that we're hearing that are not true, like you can't have more than two people in your car, or if your kids are caught playing with someone else's kids, you'll get a $5,000 fine. So I think it's important that as a municipality, we're actually putting out there what is actually enforceable. Uh, if we're going to make a decision on this, um, those sorts of conversations can come out of this. So I think it's important that we're very clear. There's only a few you know, items that we are going to be enforcing that are actually um, truly uh, what the province has put out. So I think uh, um, I'd like to see that happen as well. Councilor Cadman. I totally agree with Deputy Mayor and that doesn't always happen, but uh, uh, I think we don't want to advertise that we're doing uh, you know, bringing on uh, cops sort of thing, the situation. We just want to let everyone know that we're cognizant of the fact that sometimes bylaws are broken. And um, as long as people are educated, for the most part, I think everybody is abiding by the rules. So I support what you're saying, Laura. And I think that uh, the more we educate people, um, the more they follow the instructions. And, and so far, I don't get out of this house hardly, so you guys will have to tell me what's going on in this town. I've been, I'm not allowed by my kids hardly to leave the driveway, so. Uh, but from what I hear from telephone conversations is for the most part, things are going well. So everybody should keep up the good work. And I think the, the, the residents should be congratulated for the most part. And Councillor Tadman, you're not the only uh, you're not the only one with children in this community saying "stay home, mom." I can assure you of. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Bateman. I don't Bateman. feel lonely then. <laughs> Councillor Bateman. I'm sure this has already been run by Chief Paddock and uh, Deputy Chief Ogden, but I'd love to hear from the chief that he's comfortable and confident if he gets called into this, especially confident that if he does it, it doesn't affect his primary role. But I'd love to hear from him saying thumbs up. Chief. Thank you, uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, Deputy Ogden and I are both, uh, we're in the community. Uh, we're responding to, uh, continue to respond to calls for assistance. And so uh, certainly we're, uh, we're gonna be there to, to lend some guidance or education. Uh, uh, the CAO and I had this conversation first thing this morning and uh, yeah, the, we, we aren't going to be out patrolling, looking for people, but we will be, we're in the community anyway. And uh, if we see a place where we can assist, we will. Thank you. And, and Chief, you and the Deputy Chief are both um, um, already Provincial Offenses Act officers with certain uh, degrees of enforcement power as it is. And I think so that's why this may, is a natural uh, transition during the pandemic, but perhaps you could speak to that for, for Council's uh, education as well. Yes, indeed. Uh, both uh, Deputy Ogden and I are, are Provincial Offenses Officers under the uh, under the FPPA, the Fire Prevention Protection Act, as assistance to the, the Fire Marshal, which we are registered. Uh, we are allowed to and can enforce that act and the uh, lay charges and what have you around that and any other uh, fire acts such as the open air burning policy and that that we have approved through a provincial government uh, the uh, the different uh, uh, regulations around that so we do have some powers already uh, but uh, this just adds to it when it comes to municipal bylaw and uh, that of the uh, emergency management Texas. Thank you, Chief. Any other questions or comments from members of Council? Council LeBlanc. To you, Your Honor, for Chief Caddy. On the burn barrels, uh, is that a bylaw or is it a fire marshal's issue that you're on there? Because I know you responded a few times that people were burning their uh, garbage in the burn barrel instead of paying the extra $1 bag tag. 
So uh, would this be part of the bylaw or the fire is on? Fire with the, thank you. Your microphone's uh, muted, Chief. Through you, your worship, to Councillor LeBlanc. The use of burn barrels uh, is covered through our open air burning bylaw. So it is a municipal bylaw. Burn barrels are only allowed to be used outside the, the limits, if you will, of the former town of, of uh, Brighton. So out in the rural area, they can be used. No one in any location is allowed to burn garbage or any of the sort. It is simply clean burning wood only. And, uh, you know, that's, that is the, that's the open air burning bylaw. So it, it's not under the uh, Fire Prevention Protection Act, the FPPA. It's under our municipal bylaw. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of council? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So now we'll move into the roundtable discussion. And thank you for catching that, Candace. I appreciate it. Uh, advisory committees to meet virtually. So I will open the floor uh, for council's discussion and perhaps we'll get staff's input as well on, on how we can manage this if we decide to go forward. Members of council, how would you like to proceed with regard to advisory committees? Uh, Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to hear from staff uh, how they suggest we go forward before I make any suggestions, if that's okay. That's fine with me. Uh, Mr. Castleman or Madam Clerk, do you either of you have any uh, comments or suggestions? Uh, from an IT standpoint, I'm going to leave it up to the clerk. Uh, having said that, uh, uh, there are some committees that uh, perhaps could meet virtually dependent upon our decision with respect to community events. So uh, as an example, if our decision is to carry on with Applefest and or carry on with certain community events, it takes time to plan ahead. And these people need to be meeting virtually or otherwise in order to plan ahead. Um, if they're not meeting and not talking to each other with respect to these events, there's no point of having them because uh, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, there's uh, a long lead time associated with getting a ready for 10,000 people to come and visit us during an Apple Fest. That doesn't happen within a week or 10 days. It takes time. So those are be the only two that I could think of off the top of my head. And as far as uh, the IT side of that, I'll pass that back to the clerk. Any comments, Madam Clerk? Um, just the fact that I'm not IT, uh, <laughs> so I have a really hard time doing this. Um, actually, I've been having Randy help me um, do all these Zoom meetings, make sure that we're um, doing it properly. Um, so we would have to do the same type of meetings for the committee meetings as, as we're doing for council right now. So there will be an added cost um, because I would need help with that, especially now that I'm losing Patrick. Comments from members of the council. Uh, Mayor, Councillor Tadman. Thank you once again, Mayor. Uh, I think out of courtesy to all these different committees that we need to at least uh, meet once and update each one of the members on the committees and let the committees decide themselves what their priorities would be during this time. So, um, and I certainly think it will be worth the money for Candace to have Randy help her through doing however we want to set that up virtually. But they're all sitting at a standstill. They don't hear what we hear here. Um, and, and I think in all fairness, they need to know that not necessarily when they'll be able to meet again, but at least to know that that we do support these committees and um, but 
because of the legislation right now, we can't necessarily meet together, but I think we can do something virtually. Can I ask a question? Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, so, um, first of all, I think we kind of have to decide what committees maybe need to meet. Uh, I don't think it's a good idea to leave it up to the committees, sorry Mary, to decide what priorities are. I think we have to be careful to make sure that um, um, we're prioritizing with the guidance from staff as far as what we should and shouldn't be doing right now. Um, there's certain committees that probably do need to meet just to have a discussion to decide, okay, we're just going to put what we're putting on hold and what we're not putting on hold and, and that sort of thing. And there may be other committees that actually don't need to meet right now, like, you know, the Heritage Committee. Um, you know, the, these are um, a great group of people, but they are older. I don't think they even want to meet. The, the technology might be difficult. I don't know that, but there's nothing really that we can do right now on the Heritage Committee. There's no projects that we can continue on with right now. But there might be other committees like community events who do need to have a bit of a discussion maybe, or like I said, Apple Fest as well. So I don't know if we have a list uh, or if we can put together a list or we want to do that right now. Um, uh, as far as who needs to meet virtually, um, that would be kind of where I'm at on this. So if anyone was able to speak to that or anyone has any ideas, that would be helpful. Councillor Anderson. Uh, Your Worship, can, can they not have a, a conference call and that would qualify or does it have to be virtual? That's what we're talking about. Well, that's a virtual meeting would be by conference or the way we're doing it now. Well, a conference call would be far, uh, use a word, easier than setting up uh, what we're doing today, I would think. You just get a line, everybody dials in and away you go. So if, uh, if we do, I mean, we're going to set it up generically so if we say yes you can meet virtually then the clerk would send out a link and that link would almost always includes a telephone conference option or, or at least that's been my experience um adam clerk could you chime in there and just let me know if that's true with the technology we're using yes the only problem that we come up with is the fact that all committees are public meetings so the public always has the ability to attend any of these committee meetings at any time so we would have to have them open to the public so it'd have to be the same format as what we are doing right now we could do a telephone conference um but it would still need to be done through zoom so maybe they may not be able to um we may not be able to see them visually but we'd be able to hear them but we definitely have to have it um, live streamed so that the members of the public can can view them if they want to. Right. Councilor Rowley. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I think as well, I think we need to decide which committees should meet. I'm um, on board with Laura as far as the uh, community events. We certainly need to do something in Apple Fest. I'm wondering if the other committees, the members, so that they're not kept in the darkest, so they know what's going on with their committee, that there could be a, an email, um, some kind of uh, letter, whether it comes from the clerk or whichever staff member would be uh, looking after those committees. I know, Candace, you're going to be busy with Patrick not being here, but I think there could be some kind of email sent so that, uh, like I said, those committee members, whether they have a lot of access to um to the internet or whatever that they could at least get an email to say why they're not meeting and maybe uh an update as to maybe when it will happen again councillor leblanc to you mayor to uh since we're going to be short staff with the clerk and them on these committee meetings i agree with the deputy mayor we should be selective on the ones we take because with this pandemic, there's gonna be a lot of extra work and stuff being done. So, and we also vote, talked about in one of our council meetings that we would want staff to be at every one of our uh, committee meetings so that we have continuity and everything would go. So I agree with the deputy mayor that we should limit the ones that we do. So we don't put on undue burden onto uh, just one staff that we're gonna have in the clerk's office because Patrick is leaving until we hire somebody and get some of this stuff done. That's my point of view, so. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Tadman. I just want to make it clear uh, to the Deputy Mayor also that I in no way was suggesting that they would um, 
make suggestions and carry through with them. It was more if they had ideas that uh, they would like to bring forward so that staff could consider whether they could even work on that. I'm thinking of something like um, the digital archives. There's some things that they can still do as long as they have permission um, to do them. Uh, I think accessibility should meet just because there is a lot of needs in this community. I do not like the idea of us choosing what's important and what's not. Uh, I think that that's a slippery slope that I won't go down um, because I think every committee is important in their own way. And all we seem to be talking about that it's community events and Apple Fest that is important. But all these communities are important and they all add great value to this community. So if we're not going to consider them all, I will not be supporting this. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I understand your point. Um, I still think there are a few committees that maybe don't need to meet because they can't do anything right now. But we certainly need to uh, we need to look at some of these committees. And yet it is difficult because they do have to be um, put uh, out exactly the way we're doing these meetings. Um, we certainly probably can't meet monthly, you know, depending on how long this goes on. Um, but I don't know if we should open it up to all committees. Uh, I just don't know that uh, that's a good idea, but you brought up a good point, Mary. I understand and I agree, accessibility, there certainly are reasons for that. The, uh, the um, digital archives could still be continuing on with some of the work that they're doing. Um, some of these work, the, some of these committees are, are kind of working action committees that are either they're planning events or they're just continually working behind the scenes doing doing work for the community and for Brighton. So uh, if they don't have to stop, then of course we don't want to. I guess I guess I'm looking for some guidance. Do we have an idea of a list of, of uh, you know, um, for myself, I'm on uh, I'm on Apple Fist and I'm on Heritage. I'm not sure Heritage needs to meet, but uh, maybe I shouldn't be making that decision. I don't know. I wonder if I could offer um, that the clerk and maybe um, Mrs. Selman get together and go through the list of committees and reach out to the chairs of each committee and ask ask the, the committee chair what's, what's your feeling in terms of A, the need to meet or the want to not meet, depending on how they, they go. And, and maybe, Madam Clerk, you could put together a report for the May 4th meeting offering a suggestions of what, what committees uh, um, we, we would allow for, vir or in fact, just allow for virtual meetings, but allow the chairs to call those meetings in coordination with the clerk's office, understanding that, that you have other work to do and, and that your work is now impacted by a, a lack of a, of a deputy clerk. Uh, Councillor Tadman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my biggest concern at this moment is they haven't met for a long time. We have incredible volunteers. Uh, some of them, well, most of them get the, the stipend, but they put in a lot more work than what they get back in a stipend. And I'm just afraid that people are gonna walk away and say, you know, what's the point? I haven't heard from the counselors. I haven't heard from staff. I'm moving on. I've offered to work and I don't seem to they don't seem to have any value in me. And I could see people doing that. And, and just the whole thing of not meeting every once in a while, you, you kind of forget, I guess, what your obligations are on, on committees. So I think a fresh, uh, whatever way we're going to move forward, we need to be in contact with every committee, not just a few. Right. Uh, Councillor Anderson. Exactly. I think we just need to contact the, the chairs or the committees and let them come back with the feedback. And, and uh, it's not a question of we are ignoring them or missing them. And, and I don't think they're walking away from anything. I think they know the situation. I think we just, after this meeting, I think they realize we haven't got together very often. And uh, and now we're getting, we're, we're getting down to business. And uh, we're there to support them. So. That's it. Our new candidate, our new counselor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, you had a comment. I agree. Um, touching base with all hang, the hang communities. On, hang on for a sec. 
Councillor Anderson, can I get you to yep, mute? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, just getting in touch with all the, all the committees is a really good idea. Uh, earlier, we were talking about Apple Fest, and that's why I keep bringing up Apple Fest because it was suggested that we, we have that conversation about where we think we, if we can even pull this off at this point or not and report back to council. In order to do that, we would need to be allowed to have a virtual meeting. Um, and that's the only reason why I keep bringing that up, but I agree that all the committees are important and I see the volunteers, the work that uh, the volunteers do. And uh, you know, they're amazing people and, I, and, and we do need to kind of contact them, but, but I think they do understand what's going on. And you know, we're all kind of, this is all new. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know how long it's going to last, but uh, um, let's make some contact with them. Perfect. So by by motion, we did um, we did say committees will not meet for the month of April. So are we all comfortable with getting a report at the May fourth council meeting to help resolve this issue? Does that make yeah. sense to everyone? Yeah. 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 Uh, Madam Clerk. <coughs> In the meantime, I can send out a letter or emails um, to members of the committees, just letting them know that um, you know we're um, we're on standstill for the month of April. Still, um, that after the May fourth meeting, that I'll let them know what's going to happen from there, from going forward, just just to keep them up to date. Yep. Very well. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rowley. Thank you again, Mayor. Uh, just want to kind of ask Laura, Laura, what do you think? Do you think we can wait till May as far as Apple Fest goes? I know with the community events, we can certainly put things on, on hold. I can speak with the chair about that as to how we move that forward. But um, do you think if we wait till into May that we're almost leaving this a little bit too late? Can I answer that? Yeah. Please. Um, yeah, I think at this point, even if we're waiting till May, pulling off Apple Fest would be very difficult, um, the planning part of it. Um, we do need to make a decision at one point. Um, so if we're going to wait to May, we're going to wait to May to decide whether committees can even meet. Is that what we're deciding? So if Apple Fest can't even meet to, until May to decide whether or not they can pull this off, we're pushing it so far ahead. I'm not sure we're going to be able to. So as, as of as of right now, no committees are to meet until May. Like everyone's shut down yes. through the month of April. So starting May one, if committees can figure out how to coordinate through the clerk's office, I suppose they could. The chair could call a meeting. Um, we haven't shut anybody down uh, past April thirtieth. So. In essence, then Apple Apple Fest could meet virtually before we meet again, or before, or whatever, um, to discuss, you know, kind of where we're at. In, in theory, any of in our theory. committees uh, could it, meet on May first yes. or second or whatever. I don't know what day of the week those are. I, I'm thinking it's. I know, but in theory, we can't all because that would be right. You know what I mean? Like the clerk, the right. clerks can't handle that. So right. uh, that's why we're, we're kind of talking in circles. Uh, but I think that if if there was a dire need for a committee to meet, uh, like Apple Fest, uh, before the end of April, then we could simply put a motion on the floor today that would um, allow Apple Fest to meet at any time um, with coordination of the clerk's office. I, I just wouldn't want to open that up to everyone until we until we have the clerk uh, with a comfortable. Uh, idea of, of how to how this is going to work, and and until we have all the chairs, you know, on board with whether or not they need to meet, and if so, how to coordinate that. But you know, I you're you're the chair of Apple Fest, so it's a bit of a, a different scenario. Yeah, and I think the difference here is that Apple Fest, uh, if we decide to cancel Apple Fest, we're done for the season. It's not like we can pick up in, in August and start doing what we've been doing, whereas the other committees can do that. They can continue on whenever, but we're kind of making a, we're making a decision and then we're done for the year, unless we can come up with some sort of other festival. But even that we couldn't do again until later on, possibly um, some small version of it. But 
I think that's just throughout the reason why AfterFest keeps coming up, and people keep asking me what we're doing. They want to know if AfterFest is going to be on or not. Mr. Miller? Um, just I'm looking at the calendar. May 1st is a Friday. So we right. have to meet probably the last week of April, which would be next week. Um, in order to you know make a discussion and make some decisions as far as timing goes. Council Rowley. Thank you. I would, um, as sitting on, on Applefest with uh, the Deputy Mayor, I, the, the sooner that we can have a discussion as to how it's going to look, whether we totally drop it for this year or do something, like ideas can come out of the, the meeting uh, later on, that's for sure. But but my concern is the same thing. If we, last year we were behind the eight ball when we started in March, and now we're two months farther uh, into the calendar year. Uh, if if it's going to go, it's going to go. I, I, I'm just not sure where it's going to go, but I really, I really do think that we need to make a decision whether to kind of stop up and move on, or, you know, come up with something. But I think we need to make to make to see what our committee thinks as well. Madam Clerk, I did do a, a small poll myself of all the other municipalities and what they're doing with their big events that they have like this because we're not the only one that has this type of event and they've canceled them even the ones that are later in the year like ours in September but um, they have canceled them all just because of the planning and not being a and like you don't know about um, if people are going to want to get together after we've come out of this COVID even you know what I mean like it may take some time before anybody feels comfortable about getting out there and getting involved so um a lot of municipalities have canceled their events thank you deputy mayor on that note then yes I would like to be able to call a meeting with Apple Fest before the end of April so we can just have a discussion so we're we all understand we're all on the same page it's not a shock to them I wouldn't want council to make a decision and then go hey we they didn't even talk to us uh and we can talk about you know ulterior plans if, if something happens earlier or if we're able to do something but to, so if if uh, you had made a can i put that motion on the floor we already have a motion on the floor uh, no, we, we don't, don't have a motion on the floor we're just have an open discussion about this right now um if you do put a motion on the floor May I suggest that it have to do with permitting Applefest to have a virtual meeting and directing staff to provide a report on other advisory committee meetings to meet virtually uh, for the May 4th meeting. Yes, you can make that suggestion. There you go. I'll second and that I motion. Will second it. All right. Mary's so I, hang on, I'll, I'll read it and then I'll, I'll, I'll open the floor for discussion. Thank so you. it's moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Council Rowley. The Council permits the Applefest committee to meet virtually and further that council direct staff to report on virtual meetings for advisory committee meetings on May 4th. Does that make sense? Councilor Tadman. Thank you. Uh, I'm pushing again to make sure that all the committees are, are contacting one way or another. Uh, a lot has been talked about what's going to happen in the urban, but what about the rural advisory for one i don't i think that those people need need to be aware of what is going to be going on with ditching and brushing and roads and everything so you know they have no way of coming to a meeting to find that out they can't go to the rural advisory meeting so i i think somehow we've got to work out how we're going to communicate to the rural people too and Madam Clerk, you have uh, you've said that you will reach out to all the chairs. Yeah. Okay. So that's a that's a good first step, and then we'll decide on May fourth how, um, how how or how we will how if or how we will allow virtual committee meetings to move forward uh, through the pandemic. I don't know if that answers your question though, Councillor Tad, and you're worried about communication into the rural area. So, uh, Mr. Hagerman, I'll let you speak to that. I was just going to make the point very simply that uh, back uh, the middle of March now, it was communicated that all committee meetings were cancelled for uh, March and April. So all of the members should have that communication that was put on all of our original communications 
uh, that was put on the household flyers that got to each household by print communication. Um, and it's been online for oh, well six weeks now. So um, those committee members should should have been aware that uh, they they would not have a meeting uh, until at least the uh, start of May. Just, just wanted to make that point. Councilor Cadman. Thank you again, Mayor, and thank you, Ben. Uh, I know that happened in March, and now we're almost going into May. I think that they deserve an update, all the committees. So that's my argument. And I think that that will be done through the clerk's office uh, to the chairs of the committees. And it would be um, my hope that the chairs will communicate to their committee members. And Candace, I, I trust that you'll uh, encourage that. Councillor Tadman. I'm back again. Yes. Don't you just love me? <laughs> Anyways. Carry uh, on. <laughs> Uh, okay, you won't commit. Um, I really do believe that this is important, um, but I don't want to put all the work on Candace. And I don't know how busy Ben is. I'm not there. I'm not allowed out of here, so how can I tell? But anyways, um, could not Ben reach out to those people and bring back a report for us? I, I think that what we'll do is we'll let staff figure out how best uh, to organize the communication of this because uh, Mr. Hagerman doesn't report to us. Absolutely not, <laughs> but I always like to make little suggestions. Understood. <laughs> Councillor LeBlanc. Doug, your, uh, your microphone's um, muted. Thank you very it's much for me. Where? No, 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 I'm listening. <laughs> Uh, this is for the deputy mayor uh, that, that sits on the uh, Alpha Fest. Has anybody reached out to uh, um, Mrs. Waterhouse to see how she feels, what she can do, what she can design, or, or, or get going uh, before this? And I didn't know if she was the chair of the Alpha Fest. I don't know who sits as the chair either. The deputy mayor is the chair. Deputy mayor? Um, well, as, as of things are, uh, we're not allowed to meet, so we can't have those conversations. We did have an email go around, just everyone you know, everyone started piping up about what they could do or couldn't do. And uh, basically I said, you know, we just have to kind of put a pin in it for now until, until the council decides what we're going to do because we were not to meet until the end of April. So uh, I would like to have a meeting so that we can have a discussion and then we can give a little report back to, by way of minutes, back to council. Anyone else? Councillor Anderson? I think we talked this <laughs> talked this through pretty well. I think it's down to communication, and uh, I think Laura knows what she's got to do, and I think she should have a meeting next week, and we'll get on with it. Very and well. The, so we have we have a we have a motion on the floor. If there's no further discussion, Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councilor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. So now staff implications concerning COVID-19. Uh, I guess what I'd like to do is go around to the directors and just ask the directors um, or Mr. Castleman, if you'd rather do it, just to hit the highlights uh, of things that are affecting your departments, uh, what council might be able to do to, to help, if anything, or just uh, provide some, some sort of daily highlights and, and bring council up to speed as to what's happened over the last I don't know, where are we, six weeks in now? Something like that anyway. And Mr. Castleman? Uh, I'm just gonna kick it off and then I'm gonna hand it off to the individual department heads. Uh, over the course of the last six weeks or so, we've put in place uh, a business continuity plan and we've also put in place a uh, directive to work from home and what the guidelines are in that regard. 
we're reviewing those on a weekly basis. Um, new information comes our way all the time and we've had to adjust. So the reality is that uh, I'm gonna say off the top of my head, we have um, two thirds of our staff working from home or have been working from home over the course of the last little bit. Uh, so certainly a skeleton staff within uh, within the various offices and or buildings across uh, uh, across the municipality. So I'm gonna stop there and just hand it off to the individual department heads and they can talk to you a little bit about what has been occurring in their individual departments. So Mr. Preston, how would you like to start? Thanks, Bob, <clears throat> through you, your worship. Uh, in our water department, we've taken precautions to keep staff separated. Uh, same with the wastewater department. Uh, we're keeping them working out of different buildings <clears throat> so that they're not exposed to each other. As far as roads go, uh, today is the first day after a month that we've had all road staff in uh, because we've rented some equipment so that we can start ditching. Uh, the winter is behind us so that uh, we're now summarizing our trucks, getting the plows off and getting the mats in on the chains so that we can haul material. Uh, so we're going to start ditching tomorrow on uh, some of the smaller projects, uh, start the surface treating program. Um, getting our tenders out so that we can do the pulverizing and the culvert replacements, that sort of thing to, to prep all the work. Uh, so um, in the office though, um, as many people as possible are working from home. The office is still closed to the public, as you all know, and uh, we've upped our sanitation of all the buildings. Uh, we've implemented protocols just for our half tons and our large trucks so that everybody is uh, assigned a vehicle and there's a cleaning protocol we go through at the end of the week. Uh, so overall, the staff are holding up fairly well. It's a trying time for all of us as we're all aware as we're into this now six weeks. Uh, so uh, for the most part, public works, uh, we're hanging in there and the guys are all, well, the whole team's doing an excellent job. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Parkinson before we carry on? Uh, on on what he's had to say. Anyone? Uh, Mr. Bateman, Councillor Bateman. I was just going to ask if uh, summer students have started, or are we getting summer students this year? So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump in there. Um, and once we get around to Linda, uh, uh, what I've asked her to do over the course of the last little uh, last week or so is try and get an assessment of what our cash flow requirements are. Um, on a go forward basis. Obviously we have many of our facilities shut down and there's an impact on the revenue side. So I'm trying to get ahead of it as quickly as I can to try and understand what mitigation measures that we need to put in place or not. Uh, certainly uh, the students, uh, the majority of students uh, will be delayed at best. Uh, so we have two that will be starting in GIS at uh, on the date that they were indicated to start, which I think is May 4. Uh, the remaining uh, remainder of students have been delayed uh, from a May 4 start to June 1st and uh, subject to what uh, the pandemic may hold. Uh, certainly, uh, we're looking at other staff, other seasonal staff, and uh, putting in place some mitigation measures to try and mitigate the expense side uh, to offset the loss in revenues. As a quick follow-up to that, um, Mr. Castleman, do we do we receive a summer jobs grant for students? I'm going to let Linda jump in. Hi, sorry about that. Um, yes, we have applied for Canada's summer grant, uh, summer jobs grant, but. We haven't had any notification on it yet. Um, we did receive a uh, memorandum uh, from the federal government last week that um, that advised us that they were going to extend the program all the way through um, to February 2021. Um, so perhaps Canada summer grants can be used for co-op students in the fall term if we can't utilize um, students this summer. We have to we have to be um, respectful of the equipment that we have, obviously, and and whether we can fit students into our current.
current program with the social distancing that's in place, I think is our largest concern with that. Um, but we haven't had notification yet on that on that grant. Thank you. I will we'll come back to you. Uh, any other questions for Mr. Parkinson? Council LeBlanc. Make sure I'm off. Okay, I'm off. Uh, <laughs> it's more of a of a compliment to the mayor for the, the road uh, crew getting ahead of the potholes. I've heard a lot of comments from the people <laughs> in the rural community uh, that they really appreciate that they've been out there doing it. And as quick as they can, I know they were divided crews, separate trucks, but uh, uh, this year compared to last year is a big difference. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Parkinson? Um, Preston, if I can, we talked about uh, an urban roads schedule or plan and a ditching and brushing plan for what roads would be done year after year. Um, you provided a, a rural roads plan out seven years. And I'm just curious um, when you think we'll have the urban roads plan and the brushing and ditching plan for, uh, for council's information. The brushing and ditching plan can likely come in May, uh, but the larger plan of the urban reconstruction with uh, bridge work it will likely take a little bit longer because we're down a staff uh, member in the engineering department right now. So uh, that could be more June, uh, maybe the end of June for, for the urban reconstruction plan. Thank you, appreciate that. Anyone else? Councilor Tadman? I did escape without my kids catching me and I drove <laughs> up along Bay Street and uh, I'm just wondering, will we, will the staff be doing that, that barrier that they put after the rocks and closer to the road? Because I'm always concerned that that road's gonna get washed out. We still don't know if we're going to have as bad a flood this year I'm hoping we don't, but will we be prepared in time to have that extra barrier there? Because didn't we last year buy some kind of a gadget that fills up a few bags at a time? I sort of saw it working. Maybe Preston. Uh, through you, your worship. Uh, yes, Bay Street, uh, I've applied for a permit from Lower Trent. We've conducted the work already. We've reinstated all the large stone from the marina all the way around to Lambton Street to protect that shore. And we're currently just watching the water levels uh, when it starts to rise. And, and if we're sure that uh, things are going to get worse, then we're going to uh, instate the wall, the sandbag wall along that frontage to protect the roadway. And the devices we used to fill the sandbags last year were we converted the sandplow trucks over to use the conveyor system so they go into a sandbag uh, to save all the shoveling and and whatnot so yeah we have three trucks equipped for that so it won't take us long to build that wall uh, when time requires go ahead is am i the go ahead you are thank you uh, um i just wanted to, to uh, thank all the people that uh, have been sandbagging and I know it's very much appreciated down around here and I'm sure other places too and I do believe Councillor uh, Bateman's been doing a lot of that sandbagging and I do believe that I heard that Councillor LeBlanc takes a lot of tea and I don't know whether there's anything in the tea but I know he takes tea to them and and uh, a lot of people really appreciate that so whoever deserves kudos kudos to you well, good work, guys. Uh, Council or Deputy Mayor, go ahead. Uh, thank you. And just uh, a note that uh, again, so we, we haven't met for a little while, um, but every week the uh, emergency control group is meeting, and we discuss all of this stuff every week. Staff, I've been impressed with staff. They, they're keeping up on all this, uh, checking the water levels, and uh, and have a handle on what needs to be done and when. And it's hard when we don't hear all this, um, but. It, but it's been it's been really good to be able to to be part of that and know um, that they're on top of everything and I really appreciate it. Councilor Tadman. I'm back again. Um, that's all well and good, Deputy Mayor and Mayor, but we don't hear it as counselors. And when people ask us questions, we have no 
no way of telling them what's going on. So we would, I, I don't, I speak for myself, but probably for all counselors, I think they'd like to hear what goes on at those meetings. I will uh, redouble my efforts on the uh, on the updates by email to include all of that information for everybody. Thank you. Or you, or you could even assign it to your deputy mayor some of it. <laughs> and then, then she would simply be doing what I've been doing, so that's fine. I think I can manage. Good. Uh, so, um, with, unless you have a plan as to who's next, Mr. Castleman, I'm going to go over to uh, Ms. Whittefield. Thank you. Um, so, finance department has been busy through all of this. Um, um, distancing that we've been doing we we're alternating two staff teams and so staff have laptops at home and so they work from home a couple days a week and they work in the office a couple or three days a week um, we've been working on audit it's coming uh, to a close now we've we've pretty much answered all of their questions and given them all of the information we're just waiting on a couple of little things and i believe they're going to reach out to linda salman to um, have a discussion with you, Mayor Ostrander, and with Mr. Kesselman. Um, water bills were put in the mail uh, about a week or week and a half ago. And um, we did send out um, a slip or, or an information on the high school project with that um, on behalf of the high school. Um, county tax rates are now set. So next up is our tax rate bylaw and we'll be bringing that to council at the beginning of may um, one of the things that we have to consider when we bring that um bylaw to council is what staff's recommendations are going to be with respect to the tax due date for the final billing um, we usually have a final billing due date of end of july and end of september um, but in discussions with the other treasurers we may recommend extending that um, based on the fact that the province has extended the e education portion of the levy. And um, I was looking at, I have been looking at and will continue to look at um, our first or our actuals in comparison to a prior year into our budget. The first quarter didn't look that much different. Um, but remember that it was at the end of that first quarter that we started doing um, the closures. And so I, I fully expect our second and third quarters are, are going to see um, some loss in revenue. And so I'll bring a report back at the beginning of May um, once I've had the time to, to finish my analysis and then discuss with the CAO. Thank you. Any questions for the CFO? Councilor LeBlanc. Thank you. Make sure I'm on. Uh, to you, Mayor, for the CFO. I noticed, I don't know if you, if you're with this, but the, um, for permits, I noticed compared from 2019 to 2020, the first quarter, we were up by uh, three to uh, 400%. Does that help you in any way? permits for housing building buildings building permits and stuff if that's part of your department money coming in revenues coming yeah in. yeah i haven't noticed a large increase in in the revenues um for building permits right now and um i did reach out to our cbo today so i'm hoping to get more information perhaps there was was more revenue coming in 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 april Councillor Cadman. Uh, thank you, Mayor, through you to Linda. Uh, it's my understanding that we can't run a municipality in the red. Is that correct? Correct. And also it's my understanding that there has been some talk that uh, the next phase of funding that comes out from the, both the feds and the province may be considering passing a little dough to the, the municipalities. But I don't think we can count on that. So some of the projects that we're not doing is going to be a buffer for us. And I know you'll be watching to see that at the end of the year, we're not going to be in the red. 
and but we do have some pretty good reserves in case. So I think the news should go out that we're doing okay at this point anyways. We're being very frugal. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor Ostrander. Um, Council should rest assured that the municipality is in good financial position. Um, your auditors tell you that each year and they will be telling you that again this year. Um, the municipality is, is fortunate in the fact that we uh, have a, a line of credit um, that we haven't used in a number of years, but is still there. That, that facility is still there. Um, you have some flexibility in your internal loan payments. If uh, we were getting into a little bit of a bind, maybe we would, we would bring to council a recommendation to lower our internal loan payments in 2020 to offset some of the um, um, deficits if we think that we're going down that road. If you're not um, providing programming, if you're not providing um, community center rentals, um, if you're not providing you know, ball field rentals, that type of thing. There will be less maintenance and less staff time um, that are applied to those. So there's a lot of considerations when your revenues go down, so do your expenditures in some respects. Um, hydro would be lower in buildings that are not, uh, you know, open to the public and not using as many lights and that type of thing. So there are some considerations. I'm just not seeing it in the actuals yet. I think that we'll see more in the second quarter as we go through and I, I think that council should at, at the same time rest assured that we're in a good financial position in this municipality and we don't have the same worries as others and as we we're also collecting all of our COVID expenses so anything that um, that we are uh, any additional expenses that we're attributing to the COVID-19 pandemic um, we're going to collect that information in a single account that will allow us to um, advise the province and advise the fed federal government what our uh, what the implications of that uh, of this pandemic is for our municipality. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to Mr. Miller. afternoon um, as uh, Linda was saying we're, we've been lucky as far as the closings go we only missed a week of hockey and it was near the end of the year so we weren't fully we weren't fully rented anyways and same as the community center we only missed one week in in March so I think any any changes significant changes revenues will be would be felt the second quarter obviously because we won't be able to have any revenues with our facilities um, but having said that we've been busy uh, we have full complement of staff this week starting this week and uh, each staff member has a vehicle um, so we're out busy in the parks getting the parks cleaned up the brush and whatnot uh, we've been busy cutting uh, trees we've had quite a few ash trees that have died up at the cemetery so we've been up there cutting trees and getting that uh, ready um, as well. We're carrying on with our capital projects, uh, getting them getting them underway. And uh, we're doing all we can, um, you know, when the time comes to have the parks open and the green spaces that uh, they'll be uh, safe and ready to go for the public to use. And that's pretty much where we're at. Uh, students are pretty much used primarily for the uh, for the bookings like the ball diamonds to groom them and the soccer fields and whatnot um if those operations are are running this summer then uh you know we're still doing grass i mean the grass is starting to grow we've been cutting actually a couple of spots this uh today um so you know it's kind of business as usual for us from an operation standpoint that way uh maintenance and that but uh, it's going to be the fields uh, that are going to be the biggest uh, the operations for booking so it's going to be the biggest change that we have thank you questions for mr miller so i saw someone's hand and then you switched spots on me there you go councillor bateman i was just going to say the the revenues will be impacted if this continues on because i think jim mentioned there was a few weddings booked in 
deposits paid for that we're probably getting to the period where that's going to be refunded shortly yes but again the either be less less of a cost for hydro for staffing um and, and stuff like that so i mean yeah there will be a loss but i mean again expenses won't be as much either Councillor leblanc yes <clears throat> through you mayor to uh jim i want to thank you very much uh for answering back those emails to the citizens on uh, cleaning up the park and your quick response on that uh, my my question to you is that the students that they use are they the same students that the dbia uses for doing their flower pots for beautification of Brighton. Is that going to go on this summer? You know? Well, I think we're, we're definitely planning on, uh, when I talk to the DBIA, unless it's changed, we're looking at still putting hanging baskets and planters out. Um, so that's not going to change uh, even the flowers. Um, I've talked to our, our gardener, Steve at Zula, and, and we're going to do what, what we can. Uh, we've been lucky that uh, the last couple of years we've put a lot of uh, our pots are the reservoir type so we can we can water them uh, go every other day or every second day or third day in some cases um, as far as watering goes so I think we should be in fairly good shape that way uh, one more question Wait, hang on hang on Councillor Rowley might want to chime in on the DBIA stuff go ahead Yes, exactly. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I should I should just say uh, some of the DBIA met today informal, informally, virtually as well. And just to give an update, yes, planters are coming. Um, the flowers are coming. I think all uh, end of April, mid-May um, streets should be spruced up again a little bit. That's for sure. So yeah, from the DBIA, uh, that stuff will still be moving ahead. There might be a delay in some delivery of some new planters, but uh, um, everything as far as the, the streetscape goes is going on for normal. Thank you. Um, Councillor Blanc, I'll come back to you. You have another question, I think, but Councillor Anderson also had a question. Councillor Anderson? Uh, just, am I on there? You are. Uh, the, the skateboard park, uh, we probably talked about it an hour ago, but uh, um, that's going to be delayed now. The tenders are out or going out. And that, that'll have to be delayed as well. Well, yeah, I mean, the tenders are out. It closes May 14th. Uh, we're using bids and tenders that site. So it pretty much looks after everything for us. We put a couple of addendums out, uh, basically uh, letting them know that they can, they have to put their, uh, submit their, their bids with that website. And, uh, you know, we're looking to have at least have it awarded uh, in May. So it's just going to be a matter of when, when the uh, successful uh, uh, contractor is able to uh, start working on it. It's not, again, it's not an essential service, uh, the skateboard park. So that's, that's where at the mercy of, uh, of the province. Uh, it's like the dog park, uh, the fencing companies, they're not essential services. We can get the driveway done, which we plan on doing in short order. Uh, but the fencing is going to have to wait until uh, they're able to uh, to work. Okay. Councilor okay. LeBlanc, back to you. Well, probably to Mayor, to, uh, to Jim, uh, probably my question is probably not essential, but uh, you know, it's a, with me, the, the Gosford dock, the one that had the rolling wheels, and we were going to replace them that this year. Is that one going to be replaced this year? Or you probably okay. already have it done. We're work. Uh, we're working on it right now as we speak uh, to get some uh, get some pricing to replace that with a uh, removable uh, aluminum dock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. If there's nothing further for Mr. Miller, we're going to go on to Miss Doran. Okay. Um, a little update. We are going to be. Uh, we are now issuing marriage licenses again um, through the ORG. We were mandated that we had to do so. We had to come up with some type of plan in order to do that. So we've um, are accepting electronic payments and accepting all the documents electronically. We've got a plan in place. Um, burial permits. Um, the cemetery is open again. The ORG is um, allowing us to accept electronic documents. 
from the coroner and from the uh, uh, funeral directors. Um, lottery licenses, we're going to extend the deadlines on those. I'm um, not sure for how long, but we'll see what happens. Um, and then a quick question or a quick comment, um, planning uh, meetings. Um, we can have virtual planning meetings as well or incorporate those. Um, however, the, um, Amanda from DM Wells has let us know that at this point, there's, they're not aware of any other municipalities in the area that are proceeding with virtual public meetings for statutory public meetings for all planning items um, that, uh, that is a requirement. So um, I'm not sure what council wants to do there, but that's up in for discussion as well. Is there any questions or comments, members of council on that? Councilor Bateman? I was just gonna ask Candace, I spoke to Patrick already, but if you can pass on uh, my best wishes and gratitude for his work for the municipality. Thank you, anyone else? Councilor LeBlanc? Yes, on the uh, the planning meetings, because to Candace, through you, Mayor, um, on the planning meetings, is there any way we could have a planning meeting that we social distances like we use a an arena or something if they got to be done so people can get their building permits and and get things done so it doesn't delay it because i know a lot of people wait for these issues for building permits and stuff to get it done is there any way you can do it with everybody being distanced so you can still have a public meeting i know that, that our, our, our our building is cramped but uh, maybe not there i'm just throwing it out there we we just heard that we can hold them virtually so if that's if that's the road we want to go down, um, then we can. Now that said, the province has said that we don't we don't have to adhere to any of the deadlines at the moment, so we're able to push everything back. Uh, my concern with that is that we may have some planning wishes in the in the works that we should be considering, so that work can start as soon as all the restrictions are lifted. And I think that would be beneficial to our local economy if we can help move those things forward. So it's up, it is up to council. If council wants to provide direction to the clerk's office that that's the route we wanna go down, Candace and, and Randy and friends will figure out how to do that. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, is that me? So, oh, sorry. My turn, Mary. Um, okay. If there's a, definitely a need uh, for us to have a planning meeting, and now planning has nothing to do with uh, issuing of building permits, so it's a different thing, just to be clear. Um, but if we do need to have some planning meetings or a planning meeting, I'm all for us uh, moving ahead with that virtually if we need to. I don't want, uh, our economy is gonna be affected by this enough. I don't want uh, us to make that worse. I want us to keep moving so that when things um, uh, change that uh, any planning projects can continue along as they were so that's my opinion i don't know if you need a motion at this point or no, no we'll, we'll we'll just have a little discussion here and see what we want to do council tadman i totally agree with the deputy mayor bink and i think we should get right at it because once things open up again we want to be ready we talk about shovel ready these people want to get back to work and need to get back to work that's their income and all the workers that work for these developers and builders. So if if there's any way we can assist in moving things forward, I think we should do it. So I'd love, I, I, if you, I would put a motion forward or someone else can put it forward and I'll second it. But I think we, we need to move forward with the virtual meeting. And then we can talk about how we can move forward from the virtual meeting to how we can help but i we definitely need our planner there to help us with the guidelines that the province has given us at this point thank you councillor bateman did i see your hand yeah i was just going to ask with the deadlines extended by the province that's for the municipality how does it apply to those that have say they have documents from lower trent that are time dated or any other agency do those timelines get extended for the applicant as well so my understanding is that all planning deadlines have been For sure. Yeah, okay. they're just until until such time as the pandemic is over and restrictions are lifted, 
the, the province is saying those deadlines are off the table. So that's that's my understanding. Um, but I'm I'm in agreement with what everyone so far has said with regard to moving forward with virtual planning meetings. And I don't know if we need a, a motion to direct you to do so, uh, Madam Clerk, but I think if uh, you have the sense that council wants to get moving on these planning meetings, um, let's start down that road. Councilor LeBlanc, you had your hand. No, I was just pointing to the CAO. He was pointing at me, so I was pointing back. <laughs> I, I thought he was pointing at me. Isn't that weird, <laughs> Mr. Castleman? Uh, my my only comment was that uh, two and a half hours ago, we our first motion was to uh, incorporate virtual planning meetings into the May 4th and May 19th meeting. So I don't think we need anything more. Very well. So that, that would then, we would need to then again, uh, suspend the procedural bylaw to incorporate statutory public meetings. And that's okay. These things are gonna have to be fluid uh, with these virtual meetings as we go down the road and so far so good. Um, I think council's understanding of that. So we'll just uh, conduct the business we need to conduct as, as we go down that road. Thank you for that reminder, Bob, appreciate it. Uh, Madam Clerk. I don't think that we need to amend anything because um, we put it into our procedural bylaw that we can have virtual meetings. They don't have to be special council meetings now. We can just have regular council, but by virtual. Sure. And um, what we would should do though, is make sure that we get the agenda out in plenty of time to receive questions from the public instead of having them um, able to ask the questions virtually, if they could bring them to us ahead of time, then I can give them to council. You guys can direct your answers that way or the planning department can to those people. Good. So, Councillor Anderson. So the fourth would be a, a push to get out, get that, get, get that out to everybody. Right, uh, Candace? Well, we may not have anything for the fourth, but we would for the second meeting in May. Um, I'm not sure what Carol has ready to go for the fourth, but that'll be on the agenda. Let's get that planning department working. <laughs> All right, anything else for the clerk? No one? All right, so Chief Caddick, your update. Bullet points, Chief, bullet points. I got pages and pages here. bullet points chief <laughs> well you're you're going to hear some of the important things because there's a lot going on in the in this uh, when it comes to covid 19 because it has a pretty direct impact on our crew and our team so we've had to adjust some of our protocols which we've done um and that's not been just brighton it's been all of northumberland county all of the departments have adopted similar response protocols when it comes to these uh, these types of incidents we've uh, our team has uh, been doing really well um, we are uh, I can tell you and and I don't mind sharing this because it is through the uh, county that um, pos COVID positive calls will result in a zero response from the from the department and that is all fire departments in Northumberland County if they do identify if they screen positive we don't go the ambulance will attend, EMS responds, but that's all that responds. So that's that's currently where we're at. Um, the thing is, there's many calls that are inconclusive that we still have to respond to that could very potentially be COVID positive. So we we are uh, we have uh, very strict PPE guidelines now that are being followed. Screening is done by our ambulance <laughs> dispatch, our dispatch, and our firefighters, and uh, so that we can uh, identify. We also, the province has a new portal that um, the deputy and I have access to that I can tell we, we, had, we can do a quick search and do an address search and tell you where COVID positive patients are. And I can assure you we have them in Brighton. So don't, don't ever think we don't, we do. Um, uh, it, our decontamination has Simple calls that used to take 15 to 20 minutes take an hour and a half to two hours because we have to decontaminate the all of us. We have to decontaminate the trucks. It takes time and, and energy. Um, I can tell you we've uh, since uh, the and you've seen uh, when uh, CEO Castman gave his uh, 
capital budget we have in, installed and have working the new uh, deer extra extractors or washing machines, the high-tech washing machines. We've installed dryers as well in both stations. Uh, so we've, we've, we've really upside, upscaled our, our uh, decontamination capacity and uh, we're, we're thankful we were able to do that rel relatively quickly. We did see a call decline, but it has come back. Our calls dropped off because nobody would go anywhere, but we see that changing now and we're starting to, to move back into the, into the, into the, our re regular routine. As has been right from the get-go, my concern is always our team, the health of our team, because we are active, uh, actively involved with these patients front line. Um, we do have currently have one individual who is in self-isolation at this time. We've had others that come out of isolation and are fine. So uh, again, we monitor this. Uh, we monitor it with through the Chiefs Association. Uh, the Northumberland Chiefs were meeting daily. We are now meeting uh, twice a week. Um, and so we, that keeps us uh, busy with the, uh, just keeping up on, it is a fluid situation, it's changing constantly, the guidelines, uh, I was on a call with the Ontario Fire Marshal this morning and the Premier of the province uh, discussing, uh, there was a really good discussion about some of the new initiatives that are coming out. So, so it is, it is, it's a busy time. Um, I'll speak just quickly about flooding. Um, we are monitoring that very closely. Um, I'll let uh, Deputy Ogden take over with that because he's been uh, been kind of looking after that side of it. Uh, Jeff, go ahead. Thank you. Yes. Uh, every day, whoops. every day uh, I go out and I do water checks. Uh, stop at seven locations. Uh, photos are taken at each location. They are loaded up into the municipal drive so that staff can have a look at them. The sand and sandbags are, are doing well, thanks to Preston and his crews. Uh, there's never any, last year we had a problem when there was sand and no bags. Uh, Preston and his crew are really looking after it this year. Uh, the community has stepped up, like uh, Councillor Bateman. Um, the other day I was down in Gosport and there was over 400 bags filled, sitting there waiting to go. Uh, a lot of the property owners have, uh, they're not using sandbags, they've gone to different ways to uh, protect their property. So, so that's good. Um, the water is rising, it goes up and down, um, but it always goes up higher than it goes down. That is it, sir. Okay, so uh, just kind of further onto that, um, looking at, cause I'm watching the, the statistics that come out from the, uh, the IJC's International Joint Commission. And I also look at what comes through from the uh, um, the uh, engineers out of uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and there uh, we are about nine to ten inches up over where we were last year at this time, which is which is what we are seeing. Um, their predictions are looking a little better than uh, what we've seen in the la in last year. Uh, they're t predicting a little less, so I'm hoping they're right. But again, it all is going to depend on the weather and we have any significant rainfalls and as long as the IJC continues to uh, out pour outload as fast as much as they can then it will probably be in a better position. So we, we're, we're, that's where we're at from the fire department standpoint. Uh, again, a lot going on. The, the, the stations have been closed to the public. The public uh, support that we're seeing is absolutely phenomenal. They're doing a great job. Our public are to be commended. Um, we see a lot of good things happening. I've got, we see more, uh, we've got all kinds of the little stones at the fire halls, people have painted and, and in the support that we get from our community, it's amazing. And it's really uplifting for our members and we appreciate it, we truly do. Um, just a quick note that the department was involved on last Tuesday night, we were at uh, Trent Memorial Hospital for their, for our, their appreciation and that was very, very well received. That's where we are with the fire department and I'm just gonna carry on for a few moments on the, uh, because I'm also the community emergency management coordinator for the for this municipality, so that's another hat that they've worn, and, and so that again comes with a lot of uh, responsibility and, and uh, a lot of uh, discussion with the province uh, through Emergency Management Ontario. Um, there's many, uh, there's quite a few different surveys that I'm filling out constantly as to our staffing levels and where we're at. 
PPE levels. Uh, it's more just so we can keep the government informed of what's going on and where we're at. Um, I can tell you as well, I did have the, uh, um, the military has reached out to us uh, through CFB Trenton, actually through Ottawa, through uh, the headquarters. And I have had some conversation with them as to what our needs might be in the event that things went really sideways and we had to to incorporate them so they're aware of what our needs could be so that's that's when they reached out to us so again they're pre-planning they're they're in, so that if we ever get to that point that things go really bad we can we we know that they're going to be aware of what our requirements are and uh, the deputy mayor and mayor of course have alluded that we do our emergency con control group meets every week we discuss all of these uh, things every week we we have the consideration the mayor and the deputy mayor are given the opportunity to decide whether we should declare an emergency or not at this point we haven't because we have not been overwhelmed we are can't handling things that happen because we have a great team we've got a good municipal team and we're able to uh, see so we're going to move forward on that um i think that is pretty much you know all we're, where we are we're just we're trying to be positive we got the encourage the community we want them to be safe and uh, we uh, you know we do have some vulnerable occupancies within our community and we certainly keep them close I keep them very close contact with them to make sure they're uh, surviving and have the necessary equipment and PPE that they require uh, for their staff and their residents thank you is that short enough mayor no comment, Chief. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Chief, for your comments. And I'll open the floor to members of council if you have any uh, brief questions for the Chief. <laughs> Anyone? Awesome. Go ahead, Councillor LeBlanc. I hope I'm on just check here. Okay, uh, Chief, uh, to you, Mayor, to Chief Caddick, did I hear you say we have confirmed cases of uh, the virus in Brighton Township Municipality? There are cases in municipality right. Thank you. Anyone else? We'll move on. Mr. Hagerman, do you have any comments? I have uh, some updates if you have time, but if we don't, then we can move on. It's fine. You can do the, if you can do them quickly, please. <laughs> uh, just a few things. The servicing of the industrial park has been um, has been put on hold for now. Hydro obviously doesn't. Uh, they're they're um, essential. Uh, this project is not essential. Um, we have been in touch with Union Gas between Scott and Preston, and um, they are uh, they are doing some due diligence with the property owners of our lots in the industrial park getting some stuff ready with them. So that's on, in the queue as well. And it wasn't for the pandemic, uh, Hydro would probably be pretty much near complete. When they emailed Scott last week, they said they only had one week of work left. So um, we've been right there with them. Just uh, we've been, we've been uh, given some unfortunate circumstances. Um, we do have some agreements of purchase and sale um, signed and um, and uh, contingent on, on the servicing and on site plan approval. So uh, we have had some of our, uh, some of our folks uh, stay with us even through the uh, uncertain financial uh, times. And um, uh, we are continuing to sell land. Um, we have uh, we have kept uh, Jewel Engineering on retainer. They're continuing to work with us through our uh, wetlands uh, reclamation project in our industrial park and are continuing to examine ways take other examples in um, other parts of Ontario where a large space such as 11 acres has been uh, reclam uh, reclamated uh, taken out of a uh, out of a wetlands designation and given back to its originally intended use so just continuing to work on that even through this um, over at memory junction um, I've, I was able to retain the services of a structural engineer who has uh, provided me with a report of uh, the building as well. Um, so that was all done before the, the outbreak really and the pandemic really broke. Um, 
Unfortunately, the environmental assessment has, has definitely been affected and we haven't been able to uh, hire that consultant yet. Or even if we had to, that is not an essential service at this time. So um, that will have to be on hold for now over at Memory Junction, but um, we are continuing to work with on that. Um, luckily, before the, before the uh, outbreak, we did have our hotel feasibility study consultant hired and beginning to work. So I've been on a couple different calls with them and um, we've, uh, they've given me some, some uh, due diligence, some research to help them out with. And they've been starting to work on Brighton. Obviously they're not um, traveling to our community while this is going on, but they've started to do some homework um, with that study. Um, obviously a big chunk of my role through the last five, six weeks has been from the communications end of things. Um, working at ensuring that we're communicating on all the uh, all channels um, and and things are fairly well received um, one of the more positive notes was the mayor's uh, Easter message uh, that we ended up utilizing our notification system and uh, through that we had several um, several people uh, register I believe somewhere between new registrate new household registrations came because of that so it was really good to see that uh, we were able to get that message out there so instantaneously, reminding people just because it's a long weekend, you know, we gotta we gotta stay the course with our physical distancing, um, and uh, and uh, obviously the odd negative comment on social media, but that's par for the course when when you're dealing with uh, municipal pages on social media, um, and then kind of to to summarize, I, I believe as as things sort of, uh, I, I know the province you know, put out a report today that we are seeing a peak. Uh, we, we are seeing some good news. So we're seeing some good results. Um, so in my estimation, by uh, the next uh, May 12th, we may, maybe we'll start seeing some things being becoming reopening. So, you know, we did the whole, we did the whole slate of getting the communications out there, what's closed, what's open, what's gonna stay closed. It's gonna be the reverse of that. Um, I believe in May and June and July, and. And as, as we reopen uh, community centers and community parks and all those things become reopened, we've got to get the, that next wave of communication out. And um, as well, thinking of a uh, recovery plan and assisting our local businesses, um, I think is I think is going to be super important. I've got some I've got some money budgeted in certain places that maybe we can look at help uh, help you know thinking about marketing plans that the municipality can can help uh, you know re um, recover recovery plans for our, uh, local businesses so that's sort of on my brainwave too but those are some of the things we've been keeping up with and obviously the communications end of my job has been uh, very busy uh, the last five six weeks thank you ben any questions for mr hagerman Thank you very much, everyone. Mr. Castleman, any closing remarks? No is a perfectly good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Move into bylaws now, unless there's anyone else that has any other comments in the round table. All right, so I'll move into bylaws, our first bylaw, and I'll need a mover and a seconder, is that council gives a bylaw its first, second, and third reading and finally passes on this date being a bylaw to appoint temporary law enforcement officers during the COVID-19 pandemic for the municipality of Brighton. So moved. It was moved by Councillor Tadman and seconded by Councillor Bateman. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Our second bylaw is that council gives a bylaw its first second and third reading and finally passes on this date being a bylaw to authorize the chief administrative officer to execute the appropriate documents and deeds transfer title of municipally owned property being municipality of brighton lot seven on schedule b to the agreement 
to SV Plumbing and Heating. I'll need a mover. Councillor Anderson and a seconder. Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Babin? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. And Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. Thank you. Our third bylaw is that council gives a bylaw. It's first, second, and third reading and finally passes on this date being a bylaw to stop up, close, and convey a portion of an unopened road allowance comprising a part of Casey Lane Road, a road allowance known as Part 2, Plan 38R1507 in the municipality of Brighton. Is there any discussion? Oh, wait, I'll need a mover and a second. Um, Councillor Rowley, second. Councillor Anderson. Now discussion. Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Oh, yes. Thank you. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor uh, Brian Ostrander? Yes. It's carried. Thank you. Um, any, any comments at all before I make a motion, I put a motion on the floor here to go into closed session? Okay, just remember that closed session is not by Zoom meeting, it is by conference call. So we will suspend the Zoom meeting and no. then we will go. Go ahead. But they're not to do anything. Randy's going to do it. Okay. Right, Randy? Is so, Randy there? So when we when we enter into closed session, we can just walk away from we, or Randy will suspend the Zoom meeting and then we will call in through the other mechanism for our conference call for our closed session meeting. That, that's, 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 that's correct. correct. I'm going to take, gonna care, take care, of care of it from here. From here. Very well. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mayor? Yes? Can you call for a five minute recess or anything? Or? Uh, sure. <laughs> well, I'm... <laughs> Ten. <laughs> I need, I need I'll, to I'll leave the chambers. <laughs> I'll, I need to leave the chambers and go to my office to make the conference call anyway. Well, so you have at least as much time as it takes me to get upstairs. Uh, run. Mayor, did you have a question? Your microphone. Can't hear you. Oh, I was going to ask for a bathroom break. That's there all. There you go. <laughs> we'll do, Walk we'll slowly. Do, we'll do a 10 minute recess. Um, before we do that, then I should have a motion that we um, carry the meeting on to its natural conclusion because we will be past the three hours. So let's do that first. The procedural. I'll move, I'll move it. Thank you. I'll second it. Thank you. Was moved by Councilor Rowley, seconded by Councilor Tadman, that the council meeting proceed to its natural conclusion. Is there any discussion? Nope. Madam Clerk, please call the vote. Councilor Ron Anderson? Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Okay, it's carried. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna go into closed now, right? So that you can Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read the motion to go into closed. Okay. And then we will start the closed meeting 10 minutes after that point. Give everyone okay. a chance May to I, do whatever they need to do. May I ask a question? Yes. A technical question? Yes. So uh, because we have to come back to this meeting, right, to finish up? 
We have no. to come out of closed, right? Yes. So do, do we just leave the screen alone and uh, Mr. White? Right. Yes. Okay, thank and you. Ran Randy takes care of all the Zoom stuff. And yes, we will be coming back to this meeting to close the actual council meeting. Okay, yeah, so all after I just have to do is mute and I'm good. So, 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 yeah, so uh, uh, through your worship, worship council, council, what I'm gonna, what do, I'm is gonna do is put everybody, put everybody in the, uh, the, uh, the waiting, waiting room, room and then bring and then people bring back, back into the meeting, meeting afterwards. afterwards. Good idea. Deputy Good mayor. idea. I like the waiting room. <laughs> Deputy Mayor. Again, okay, just to be clear. So we don't touch, we're not going out of this meeting, but we do need to call in on our phones in order right. to join yes. the close. Yes. And That's then correct. we will go back into the meeting on Zoom to close the meeting. That okay. is true. Good. When do you want us to call in? After the break or before? Uh, after immediately when you're done your break, call in. Okay, I'll see you in an hour or so. Oh, no. Hey, you I'm gonna go home, minutes Mary. Max. <laughs> ten minutes max. If, if that, ten dinner. minutes, I have a quorum. We're moving forward. So the motion will read that council resolve itself into closed session April twentieth, two thousand twenty, at four fifty p.m. Pursuant to the Ontario Municipal Act two thousand one, sub subsection two thirty nine two b being a personal matter about an identifiable individual, including a municipal or local board employee, uh, specifically rent abatement. Is there any discussion? I need a mover, so I need a mover and second. I'll move it. It was moved by Councillor LeBlanc and seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink. There's no discussion. Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson. Councillor Mark Bateman. Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc. Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley. Carry on, she doesn't appear to be there. Councillor Mary Tadman. Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink. Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander. Yes. Okay, carried. So Randy, you can go ahead and park us.
Just tell me when you're ready and I'll call the meeting back to order. Uh, ready to go? Right okay, so it is uh, 526 p.m. And I will call the meeting back to order with a motion. Um, I will need a mover and seconder that council rise and report from closed session April 20th, 2020 at 526. I'll move. I'll second. That's moved by Councillor Tadman and seconded by Councillor Rowley. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Councillor Ron Anderson? Uh, yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Doug? Okay, yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Bank? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Okay, carried. Thank you. So one piece of business coming out from the closed session and the motion will read that council authorizes a rent abatement for the Brighton YMCA of 50% of amounts due during the COVID-19 pandemic declaration of emergency period. Uh, I'll need a mo mover. Got three movers. <laughs> Councillor Bateman, seconded by Deputy Mayor Vink. Is there any further discussion on this? Nope. Madam Clerk, will you please call the vote? Yes. So, Councillor Ron Anderson? Ron? Sorry about that. Yes. Councillor Mark Bateman? Yes. Councillor Doug LeBlanc? Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Carried. We'll move into the confirmatory bylaw. The council gives a bylaw its first, second, and third reading and finally passes on this date a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the corporation of the municipality of brighton council meeting held on april 20th 2020. is there a mover so moved moved by councillor tadman and seconded by councillor bateman is there any discussion madam clerk will you please call the vote councillor ron anderson yes councillor mark bateman yes councillor doug leblanc Yes. Councillor Emily Rowley? Emily? Yes. Councillor Mary Tadman? Yes. Deputy Mayor Laura Vink? Yes. Mayor Brian Ostrander? Yes. Great. All right. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, staff, for the roundtable discussion. I think it was a useful commentary. I think it was helpful for Council to hear everything that's going on. I appreciate everybody's indulgence. I know it was about a three and a half hour meeting. That's uh, that's long for this council. So I appreciate everyone's uh, attention. And uh, it is- Can I, uh, can I just make, a, can I just make a comment? Yes. Can I make a comment? Yes. Why not? Thank you. Uh, Mayor, I would just like to uh, wish you happy birthday tomorrow. Those of us who know you, know you have hit the half century mark. So uh, enjoy your day. But Councillor Rowley, you're wrong. <laughs> Am you're I really year, wrong? You're a year early. You're a year early. <laughs> oh. Next, oh, well, well, next year. I'm ready for next year. But anyway, you're getting close to the half century. Enjoy. I your sure am. I sure am. And don't worry, my children remind me of that as frequently as they possibly can. <laughs> I thought she was a few years late, but hey. He lies. Okay, so now it's hey, five thirty. Now it's five thirty p.m. And I'm going to declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, very much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh,